We welcome you wherever you're looking in across the country today. Enjoy what should be a classic. Eric Stahl will face off against Sergei Zinoviev, and we're underway. Andre Markov, a Montreal Canadiens defenseman, brought down by Chris Kunitz. The referees are both from Sweden. There's a big hit early on by Ed Jovanovski as he hammered down Zinoviev. Morozov tries to center it. Alexei Morozov knocks it back to the line. Andre Markov fires it wide. And Jovanovski plays that to the line, but not out. Marcus Vinterborg and Krister Larking are the Swedish referees working this game. Vinterborg did the gold medal game last year by himself. Artan Samoe works ahead with Eric Stahl. In comes Samoe. Samoe down in the corner. Stahl posts up in front. Loose puck with Stahl. Stick was tied up. And now the Russian defender, Konstantin Kornea, falls. This is Ilya Kovalchuk back in the Russian lineup after serving a one-game suspension for a second game misconduct. His pass for Sergei Fedorov is too far. Bodies are flying already at the tail end of that icing. Ryan Getzlaff just slammed Salmon to the ice. The big Russian scorer. Ken Hitchcock, the debris from Canada is very obvious all the time. You attack the Russians physically, you get pucks in deep. The Atchisov Bikov knows that. Their team's going to try to spend more time in the Canadian zone than in their own zone. And Alexander Ovechkin, Gord, will not shy away from physical contact. We all know that. Big line on big line. It's the Fedorov line for the Russians. Gets laughs for Canada. Gets laugh, Heatley and Nash have combined to score 20 goals in this tournament. And you see Jay Bowmister just stepped down on Ovechkin. Mike Green talked about it. you got to take away his time and space early on. Danny Heatley slips by Dennis Grebnikov. In goes Ryan Getzlaff working on Cornea. Getzlaff battling for the loose puck. It slides to the corner for Sergei Fedorov. Wearing number 29, the number he wore as a young national team member in the late 1980s for the Soviet Union. He gets bumped by Nash. Ovechkin loose down low, in front, score! Alexander Seven makes it 1 nothing Russia. It's just a misread for Canada down low. They have numbers back, good physical position. Rick Nash goes for the big hit on Fedorov in the corner. But the puck comes free to Ovechkin, who puts it right up front. You see the numbers back. There are enough white sweaters back compared to the red sweaters. There's Rick Nash getting physical, but somebody just overplays down low. And what happens is Ovechkin gets the puck out in front, and Semin finishes the playoff. Ovechkin takes a huge hit to make the play, but the Russians have a 1-0 lead. Again, Canada wants to be physical, but you can't be over-physical and take yourself out of the play. In that situation, Rick Nash created a train wreck situation behind the Canadian icing line, and that led to the Semin opportunity and eventual finish. Back to the NHL season. Alexander Semin has scored goals in five straight games against Cam Ward, and that is the first time in this tournament that Canada has allowed the first goal. They're not the first time they've been behind, and that's one of the things that was good about the game against Sweden, Gord. They fell behind, and they came back. Their first real test of adversity. Canada trail for only a minute and 12 seconds in that game. Here's Jason Spezza with the puck. Out there along with Shane Doan and Derek Roy in a penalty coming up to Russia. It'll be a hook called by Marcus Vinterborg, and Canada's going to the power play as Vitaly Prushkin goes off. Jason Spetz has really been one of the Canadian players that's responded to coaching. And you see him working on Vitaly Prushkin down low. Stick, 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 and eventually the hook. But Spetz is not turning the puck over, Gord. He's fighting to get it in deep, protect the puck, draw people to him. Jason Spetz is one of the most improved players in this tournament because he responded to what Steve Eiserman, Ken Hitchcock, and Craig McTavish are selling. Prime Minister here today. He'll be joining us in our first intermission. It's Heatley, gets Laugh, and Nash up front. Mike Green and Brett Burns in the back end. Nash and Green lead Canada with three power play goals each. That's played out by Dmitry Kalina. One of the most impressive things I've seen by the Russians adapting the small ice penalty kill. They're very aggressive in all three zones, and they really pressure the puck in their own zone. In comes Danny Heatley on Kalina. They collide in the corner. The puck squirts free to Rick Nash. And Nash now works his way in front onto the stick of Zeropov. He can't clear it out. Brett Burns sends it back in deep. Now Markov will try it. Burns knocks it down at the line. Lays it there for Heatley. Danny Heatley works it back for Burns. He shoots. The ball comes in. Rebound cleared away by Markov. First good scoring chance for the Canadians. Heatley now for Green. Canada changing on the fly. The pass through the middle. Artez St. Louis lost the handle. And Andre Markov sends that back down to the Canadian zone. Reward gloves it. First time in the gold medal game for the Russians since 2002. Zinoviev falls behind the play. In comes Salloway for Spezza. Big collision in front. Spezza shoots. 
That goes off the leg and out of play. Wow, this is just bowling for dollars. You see Mike Green still on his knee trying to catch his breath. This was an unbelievable train wreck. It's a cross and drop between St. Louis and Spezza, and there's a train wreck. Three players go tumbling down to the ice after St. Louis makes that nifty little cross and drop to Spezza. It was 2.52s, Green and Markov who collided. Now Eric Stahl with St. Louis and Spezza on the power play. Stahl wins the drawback. Jovanovski, Duncan Key shoots the long rebound to Spezza. Back he goes to Jovanovski. Jovanovski shoots, deflected, tucked, and it's Stahl in front. Pernia lost the puck, Stahl backhands that through the crease of the Bokovs, got it in his glove. It's a great idea by Canada, though. Don't get cute on the power play. Get pucks on goal and outnumber the Russians at the point of attack. Keep pucks low if you can. This is a good opportunity for Eric Stahl and the quick, active glove. Of all the European-born goaltenders in the NHL, I think Evgeny Nabokov has the best glove. Most European goaltenders have great feet and they take away the lower part of the net well. They're getting the Bokov's got an unbelievable catching glove. He's also got back-to-back -back shutouts. Hasn't allowed a goal in over 122 minutes of hockey. As he blanked the Swiss in the quarters and the Finns in the semis. Ed Jovanovski. Kaczynski fell. Jovanovski hit for Jonathan Taves. He shoots. And that goes off the stick of Fedor Tutin. Up and out. 21 seconds to go in Canada's first power play. You get an idea, though, what Ken Hitchcock and his staff want. They want pucks on goal in a hurry, and they want to try to win races to get to those rebounds. So even if you're on the power play in transition, you get as many pucks as you can on getting the Bok off. Taves, Doan, and Roy, the forward line. Burns and Green on the back end. Mike Green, the top-scoring defenseman in this world championship, leads all D with 11 points and four goals. There is Yatislav Vikov, who was the captain of the unified team that won the Olympic gold medal in 1992. Originally drafted by the Quebec Nordiques, never played a game here. That's the last time that Canada and Russia met in a senior competition sanctioned by the IHF for a gold medal. Before that, at the World Championship, you have to go back to 1958 and the Whitby Dunlops. This is Mike Green. Into the corner for Jonathan Taves, battling with Danny Markov. Now Taves kicks that out. Shashinsky races to it. Taves took it right back away. Markov lost his glove. Derek Roy back for Burns. On the line for Roy. Penalty's expired. Roy walks in, shoots. That hit Dona went wide. Green down low. Two Russians converge on him. Now Roy back for Burns. Rolling puck. Burns waits, shoots, scores! Chris Burns ties the game! This is big time hockey. And this is why this guy is going to win a Norris Trophy before his NHL career is over. It's the composure level of knowing when shot blocks are coming. Derek Roy, a nice feed. Composure, pull the puck back, quick release. It's not the velocity, it's the quick release through traffic that beats up getting the Bok off that ties this game. Shashinsky comes sprawling out for number 33 in red. He can't get the shot block because of the composure of Brent Burns. And then it's just quick, hard, net, red light, goal, 1 1. Brent Burns leads all Canadian players in ice time per game. He's playing nearly 19 minutes on this star of defense, and he's got his second goal of the World Championship to tie it at one. And that gets the fans into it. There was some trepidation in this building after the quick seven goal. But look at those two guys, Green and Burns. I'm already going to book them both tickets at barring injury for 2010. Offensively, they're great, and Green will continue to improve defensively. Burns is already there defensively. Steve Steos picks his way ahead. And the shutout streak for Novakov ends at 125 minutes. You put the hex on him, that's why. Ilya Kovalchuk moves ahead along with Morozov and Zinoviev. This is Alexei Morozov. Seven years in the NHL with Pittsburgh, but he's been a star in the Russian League for the last five. Morozov lays it down to Steos at the Canadian line. Steos going for a third World Championship gold medal. That would tie him with Eric Brewer for the most in the modern history. Dave Bowmeister also part of that. Shane Doan, too. Patrick Sharp works his way in front. Jams away at it. And Nabokov made the point blank save on him. Zinoviev lost the puck. Lay it ahead for Jamal Mayers. Oh, that'll be icing <laughs> against the Canadians. That's tough. Jamal Mayers thinks he actually gets a piece of that puck. Ken Hitchcock's not going to worry about it. 
Jay Bo, Mr. Danny Heatley, Shane Doan, Steve Stales, the four Canadians going for a third world championship gold medal in this game. Heatley, the MVP of the 2004 World Championship. Nash, the MVP last year. Now off the face of Ovechkin, a bullet drive turned away by Ward. You got to have more of a presence on Ovechkin in face-off situations in your own zone. Sergei Fedorov plays it down for Ovechkin, being watched by Jay Bomister. Now Semin pulls it out. Semin in front, just missed Fedorov. Nash lost the puck to Fedorov. Back at the line, Grebyshkov shoots through traffic, a bouncing puck in front. Semin plays that in front. Fedorov swipes at it. Fedorov loose behind the goal, falls. And Dan Hamuse has it for Canada. Up ahead for Nash, and now Hamuse was hammered down by Ovechkin. Was he ever? And that's the thing about Ovechkin. He's a predator. He knows who he's playing against all the time, and he goes after them. Gets last, steals. Kunitz shoots. He misses just wide. Chris Kunitz making his international debut for Canada at any level. Now Burns steps up. In comes Burns. Fires. Blocked in front. And a chance now for Ovechkin. Away with Federer. In comes Alexander Ovechkin. An electrifying early pace here in Quebec City. 1-1 one, one the score. Battling in the corner is Stahl, picked out by Eatley. And Eric Stahl, bumped there by Konstantin Gorobikov. And Semin will tap it back. Fedor to the New York Ranger. Plays out across. And the referee, Krister Larking, falls. Now Shashinsky picks up the clearing attempt. Intercepted by Duncan Keith, the bouncing puck behind the Canadian goal. Shashinsky intercepts. Keith on the second try for San Luis. Nice play by San Luis to protect that puck deep in his own zone. Very strong. Now Kunitz plays it out. Zarepov knocks it down. Plays it there for Zizinski. Back to Zarepov. Shoots that deflects just wide. And Mike Green takes out Zizinski. Zarepov sticks in the Duncan Keith. Zizinski pulls out the puck. Trying to play that in front. Knocked away by Mike Green. Long time between whistles here in this first period. Zarepov. Lost the puck to Martin Samoa. Away with Kunitz, Green, and Roy. Flipped in front, left there. Hit the goal post. No goal. The puck right of the line. The puck off down. Samoa dropped it back, and Roy hit the post. What a touch pass. They're going to go upstairs to check. This might have hit the pad on the inside part of the goal post. And we'll be back with the result after this. You have a thought possible. <laughs> A close call for Martin San Luis. They're taking a look at it, but the initial replays indicate it is no goal. The puck at the inside of the post and came out. Brilliant touch pass from Chris Kunitz right out to Marty San Luis, and he just goes off the right pulse, and that's the right call by the officials. Absolutely the right call. What a great chance for the Canadians to take the lead in the hockey game. And there's a look at the close call for San Luis. Post out and then Derek Roy gets another opportunity. He just can't get it to go. But it's the right call and you just want to get video review right. And in this game so far it's working out well. Canada out shooting Russia 5 to 2 here in the first period. Spezza, Roy and Doe the forward line for Canada. Ham Hughes and Green on the back end. Dan Ham Hughes played nearly 10 minutes of the third period against Sweden. Spezza. Wins the draw to Roy. Have you three shot club by Nabaka? And this is what Jason Spetz has been doing a lot better at. The Hamus gets that puck on goal, but it's Jason Spetz a winning faceoffs. He doesn't want to be fancy, Jason Spetz. He just wants to be reliable. And part of being reliable is winning faceoffs. What a tournament for Danny Hamus from Smithers, BC, the former Prince George Cougar. Ken Hitchcock can't say enough good things about his reliability. And that's why he played over 10 minutes in the third period against Sweden Even in the semifinal. He's got goals in four straight against Nabokov in the NHL. Five goals in that four-game streak. Now moved ahead by Sergei Zinoviev. Zinoviev, long drive, gloved by Cam Ward, and he'll hang on as Maxim Finneganov was bearing in on him. And George, you know what we're seeing right now? Mike Green getting more ice time for Team Ken. I know Darren Pang talked with Craig McTavish about it. You see 52 and white. Green does a good job keeping everything to the outside. That's a routine save for Cam Ward. That's a good job. 
Alexander Radulov played his career here in Quebec, won a Memorial Cup with the Quebec Rampart in 2006. He was also the Memorial Cup MVP, and that gentleman was his coach, Patrick Alwa. That was Radulov, not Zenobiev. Now Zenobiev ought to take the draw against Patrick Sharp, and Sharp wins that draw. He's number three in the tournament on faceoff. Morozov tried to drop it back. Sharp can't squeeze that by Morozov. Now loose in front. Zenobiev shoots at the flex wide. The Russians elected to break up the AK Bars Kazan line. They put Ilya Kovalchuk up with Zinoviev and Morozov. Of course, during the lockout, Kovalchuk played in AK Bars. He played in Kazan, so he's just one of those Kazan guys. He qualifies. Yeah, he makes it. Jason Chimera with Jamal Mayers and Patrick Sharp. The puck loose in front, played away by Andre Markov. Paddling forward is Chimera down low for Jamal Mayers. Mayers back to Jovanovsky. He shoots, that goes off the leg of Morozov. Now Kovalchuk racing to the puck. Jovanovski moves to close on him. And Kovalchuk knew that it was Jovanovski closing. That's why he got the puck in deep and didn't try to get cute with it. Mayers has to wait for Chimera to get back on side, and now Canada will change. Just over eight minutes into this first period, 1-1 one, one the score. Dennis Grebishkov ahead for seven, the Russian goal scorer. That goes off a leg to Ovechkin. Ovechkin in. It's offside, it's offside. And the play is offside. No one can hear the whistle in this din in Quebec City. And Ovechkin has a look back. His eyes were like silver dollars. Yes, they were. And Jay Bolton was saying, good thing it was offside. And this looks like the matchup Canada wants against Ovechkin. Bolmister is a tremendous skater. We've already talked about Danny Hanhuse's consistency when it comes in. The puck comes right off of Semin, and that's what creates the offside. Ovechkin never left the zone. Ham use reliable, Bull Mister, a big physical presence who can skate, and then he got the power on power. But what Canada wants to do with their big power on power situation, get pucks in the Russian zone and force Ovechkin, Fedorov, and Semin to play defense. Semin chips that in, icing waved off as Getzlaff goes back. He's being harassed by Sergei Fedorov. Drops it off neatly for Bull Mister and ahead for Heatley. Danny Heatley with Rick Nash and Ryan Getzlaff. Here comes Nash for the loose puck. Nash scored twice in the gold medal game last year against the Finns. The first and last goals of the game. Nash battling down low. Gets left for it. And taken away from him by Semin. We only saw two people in the Canadian cycle, Gord, because Ken Hitchcock spent a lot of time where this will not be offside. Whoa, that's a bad call. Yeah, that's Fedorov off a Canadian player. And Sergei Fedorov would have been in one-on-one -on, -one on yeah. Dan Hamu. But what Canada did yesterday in practice, they were about on the ice for about an hour. They worked on a two-man cycle. They did not want to give up odd man rushes. So watch for their third guy to be rotating in the high slot, looking for the two pass off the two-man cycle down low. Ilya Komochuk, the most penalized player in the tournament. Got kicked out of one game for fighting with Anton Strahl on a Sweden. And booted from another for a hit from behind. On a player from Switzerland, there's a leaping check by Eric Stahl. In comes Kunitz, tees it up, scores! Chris Kunitz gives Canada the lead! Lord Brent Sutter started the formula in 2005. You get physical early on in a game and you try to take the Russian skill and speed out of it. So in the neutral zone, Canada gets physical. It leads to a turnover. And Chris Kunitz with hammer time. Eric Stahl hit in the neutral zone. Turnover ensues. Chris Kunitz, high glove side, 2-1 Canada. But again, it's about the debrief and Canada doing such a good job understanding the mindset of small hockey. You get physical, you challenge guys, you put Shashinsky down, and then Kunitz capitalizes with a laser beam shot. Chris Kunitz, one of three Canadian players who is wearing the Maple Leaf for the first time internationally in this tournament. A guy who was on waivers twice in October of 2005. How about never being drafted out of Ferris State? Regina Saskatchewan should be so proud of Ryan Getzlaff and Chris Kunitz. What jobs they're doing here in this tournament for Canada. Alexi Tarasjenko down low. Now the puck at the line. Dimitri Kalinin keeps it alive. Back at it down in front. Bouncing puck and Ward steers that wide. Radulov got spun around. And Roy plays it high off the glass into the feet of Danny Marka. Loose puck down for Jonathan Taves with Shane Doan. Taves comes streaking in. Gets around Kalinin. Now Doan battling down there as well. Doan in front. Loose puck. Doan takes a whack at it. Taves spins and shoots. That deflects high and wide. Back in front. Roy can't reach it. A fin again off for Tereschenko. Danny Markov. 
Long drive knocked away by Cam Ward. Ward is 9 0 for Canada at the last two World Championships. Pass intercepted. In comes an OVF. Han Jovanovsky shoots. Ward makes the save and hangs on. Uncharacteristic turnover by Brent Burns, and he's not going to be happy with himself. You can't move the puck through the inside part of the ice against the Russians on a line change. Cam Ward gets the left pad to work for him, and then there's no rebound. You see Brent Burns, number eight, in pursuit because of the wayward pass in the neutral zone. And Zinoviev, one of the better pure scorers, along with Kovalchuk, a former Rocket Richard Trophy winner in the NHL, right there for the rebound. And this is Kovalchuk with it in the corner, tied up by Burns. Zinoviev tries to pick it out. And finally, it's Kovalchuk with possession. In front, Horizov couldn't get a shot away. Now Zinoviev tries the backhand pass, but it goes to Spezza. He's away with Chimera. Jason Chimera, one of eight returnees from last year, sends it in front. Spezza centers it sharp, shoots, that goes wide. Now Spezza penalty. falls, and a penalty coming up to Russia. Zinoviev's going to get it for a trip on Spezza. This is all because Spezza makes a great decision in the neutral zone. If he's playing in Ottawa, he tries to make a cute pass to Chimera. Instead, he gets the puck in deep. That allows the four-check game to get going. And there you see Zinoviev with the active stick on Spezza putting him down. Marginal call at best. Yeah, very marginal. marginal. Zinoviev was quick to argue. Canada did not score in its first power play. The goal came right after the penalized player had come on the ice. That's a real marginal call. Burns plays it across to Mike Green. The puck hopped on him. He plays it down low for Getzlaff. Gately hangs it back for Burns. Burns being watched there closely by Fedorov. Now down low, Nash for Heatley. Heatley in front, shoots the mock off the save. At the line is Burns. He shoots. That's knocked down in front. Back it goes to Green. Bounces in front, gets left. Heatley shoots. That was blocked by Grebeshkov. Back it goes to Heatley. Danny Heatley whips it back for Green. Fedorov almost intercepted that. Now Heatley with it. Getzlaff posted up in front. Green shoots, tipped just wide by Getzlaff. Back it goes to Heatley. Down low to Rick Dad. To the line to Green, a rolling puck. Green being watched by Fedorov, waits. Plays it for Nash. Nash, he shoots and the Bokov makes the save. What that goaltending. It's good puck movement by Canada, but it's a goalie that makes the difference. And the Bokov coming out, getting the top of his crease. He's got to fight through some traffic. And he makes the adjustment. Well, there's the traffic. He reads, digests, reacts, and then no rebound. Because look who's standing right there, Danny Heatley. Gets left down low, making himself a big body. But I just love the goaltending of Nabokov there, Gord, really making himself look large. Nabokov has gone 4 0 since arriving here at the World Championship after San Jose was knocked out. Spezza plays it back. Duncan Keith, Ed Jovanovsky. He shoots, and Nabokov makes a great glove save. You talked about a back-to-back -back shutout for Nabokov, and he didn't want to give up a third one here in terms of a goal. Jovanovsky with the shot right through Eric Stahl. Duncan Keith set that up right on a table for Eddie Jovanovsky, Gord, to blast away. Canadian coach Ken Hitchcock was asked yesterday about how Nabokov did not allow the goal in the last two games. Hitchcock's response, he hasn't played us yet. <laughs> and then Pat Burns said it in French. <laughs> Dina Zarepov works his way in. Long drive. That goes just high and wide. Now Spezza with it. With Eric Stahl and Martin St. Louis. Spezza jumps across the line. Drops it back. Keith for Jovanovski. St. Louis goes to the front of the goal. Jovanovski with it. Nifty pass down for Spezza. Back for Jovanovski. Spezza works his way in. Waits. Back for Jovanovski. Has a look over at St. Louis. San Luis hit the goal post earlier. Now plays it there for Keith. Bouncing puck in front. And it's played out by the Russians. Dana Zarepov. Good counter coming. Here comes San Luis with Spezza and Stahl. Jason Spezza in. Stahl in front. Spezza feeds it down for San Luis. Ten seconds to go on the power play. Spezza in front. Shoots off a leg. Bouncing puck in front. And that got away from Duncan Keith. It was in deep. Away comes Kovalchuk. Sweeps that down the Canadian line. And Spezza collides with Kovalchuk. Kovalchuk almost reached that loose puck, but Spezza has it, plays it down in the Russian zone, and that will be icing against Canada. Two to one, the lead here in the first period. Scotty Bowman here taking in the proceedings, and the Russians are still angry about the Chris Kunitz goal in which Maxim Shashinsky appeared to be tripped by Eric Stahl as Kunitz went in on the Russian goal.
And you see it there, clear as day. Stahl did get the stick on Shashinsky. After the hit, you see it later on in the sequence. Absolutely, there was a trip. Backhanded puck down in the corner. And Steve Stales takes a swipe at that. Now Stales in the second try, gets it there to Shane Doan. Up for Jonathan Tame. Tames across the line with Roy. Derek Roy in back for Doan. That was broken up by Andre Marka. And back comes Kovalchuk the other way. Plays it there for Ilya Nikulin. Former Atlanta draft pick. I remember that AK Bars Kazan powerhouse that has all the names, but not much to show for it. Salavat Ufa won the Russian Super League title this year. Lord, wait till they get a salary cap in that Russian league. <laughs> Kazan's going to have to start dumping players. And the new Russian Continental League starts next season with a cap, apparently. In comes Danny Healy. He shoots the mock off, makes the save. Markov through the middle for Fedorov. Ooh, that could be a penalty. I don't think that that's a penalty. Guess that's straight out. That did not touch him, and the referees are consulting. Oh, yeah, that's a penalty to Fedorov. That's a penalty to Sergei Fedorov for putting the puck over the glass from his own zone. Tough break, but again, Canada wants to take away the Russian space, and Ryan Getzlaff comes right up and closes really quickly on Fedorov. He's not happy with it, but I don't believe this ever touches Getzlaff's stick. Take away his space. You see the quick reaction? Hard to see it from that angle, but Getzlaff right away says that puck goes up and over. And you see Radulov saying, stick, 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 number 47 on the Russian bench. Nonetheless, the Atchisoff Bikov's team is down 2 1, and they're facing another Canadian power play. Getzlaff from the faceoff. Rovakov battling for the loose puck, along with Nash and Heatley. And Heatley pulls the puck out for Mike Green. Across he goes to Burns. Burns shoots. And that hits someone in front. Getzlaff plays it back for Burns. Tees it up again. Now to Getzlaff. Back for Burns. Getzlaff across the top. Green's down low. Getzlaff shoots, and Nabokov makes the glove save on that. Get an idea how good his catching glove is, huh, partner? I mean, he's got the real good mitt in there. And it's a nice job, again, of having patience by Cannon on the power play and getting somebody to position in front of Nabokov. It's just a little bit too much to the left, and that allows Nabokov to snag it out of the air. Shots are 11 to 5, Canada. Heatley and Green lead Canada in shots on goal. Green has been bombing away the whole tournament. Now oh, Nash takes stick. a high stick. He was combed there by Vitaly Proshkin. And Proshkin is going to go off as Nash got cut. I think it's going to be a four minute job. Proshkin, six foot four. So he's a big guy to begin with. He played for that UFA team that Gord was telling me about, the one the championship in Russia this year. Rick Nash isn't small either, but there's really the big high stick. That is clearly a high stick to the face of Rick Nash. Two-man advantage for a minute and 30 seconds for Canada. It's a four-minute minor to Vitaly Proshkin. Double minor to Proshkin. Canada with a five-on-three. They had this opportunity against Sweden in the semifinal, and Mike Green took advantage of it late in the second period. Gets left. Shanloway burns up front. Green and Heatley on the back end. And Burns moves to the front of the goal. Heatley plays it across for Mike Green. Gets left. Has a look across and getting a stick on that with Sergei Zenobia, but it bounces to Heatley. Heatley down to San Luis. Paddle in front, Burns fighting for space. Green, bouncing puck to Heatley. It's passed down for Getzlaff. Getzlaff to Green. Across he goes, Heatley tees it up, misfires, moves it, but Burns scores! Brent Burns! Sometimes the off-speed pitch works. And what happens in this situation is pretty simple. Danny Heatley's got the legitimate one-timer. He wants to wrap it on goal, but he misfires, and it goes right to St. Louis, and then Brent Burns, the big-body presence in front, fighting off Danny Markov and just whipping it through the legs of Evgeny Nabokov. If you can't beat him high glove side, there's the off-speed pitch. Beat him through the legs! Make it 3-1, and Canada's still on the power play for three minutes and 33 seconds. And it looks like the Russians are going to call a timeout try to stabilize this thing they are Slava Bikov has called timeout he's waving the Bokov to the bench and they want to talk it over well they want to play five on five and that's the most important thing the Proshkin penalty is legit it's well earned 
and that's why you're still short 333. Fedorov definitely put the puck over the glass. That's legit. Kunich's goal was marginal because Stahl should have been called for a trip. He wants better puck support. If I can detect his hand gestures, they're too spread out right now. He wants everybody coming out of the zone together. That's what that swing motion of the hand means. Three goals on 13 shots for Canada. A 3-1 lead here in the first period. Brent Burns has two. Maybe you hadn't heard much about Brent Burns because the Minnesota Wild don't get a lot of exposure. You've heard about him now. As I said, the Burns family can get tickets ready for Vancouver 2010. Drafted as a winger. Converted to defense. In comes Sergei Fedorov on Mike Green, his Washington teammate. Intercepted by Spezza. He's away with San Luis and Stahl. Spezza works across the line. Spezza, that long reach, feeds it across in behind Stahl. And away comes Andre Markov for the Russians. Markov blocks in, shoots, gloved by Cam Ward, and he'll hang on. Canada needs to maintain their composure because this is what happens usually when you and I have done Canada-Russia gold medal games where we see Canada get a lead and then the Russians start to come get a little bit chippy and Canada retaliates and get in trouble. You see Markov put Green down, then Green comes right over. Smart move by Mike Green. He doesn't take the retaliatory penalty to make it four on four. Worth noting that Canada and Russia have met in six of the last ten gold medal games of the World Junior. 12 players in this game have played in the Canada-Russia gold game at the Juniors. Duncan Keith, another guy making his Team Canada debut in this tournament. Lays it down, and Heatley leans on Grebeshkov. Loose puck for Rick Nash. Now Heatley, back for Jovanovski. He kicks it ahead for Nash. Nash works in front. Lays it down, Heatley. Canada still on the power play. This is Keith. Keith, the wrist shot, tipped just wide by Getzlaff. This top three for Canada is going to be exhausted after all these power plays. In comes Nash. Down for Heatley. Nash works in front. Heatley. He shoots. Nabokov never saw it. Hit his arm and went wide. Nash with it. Down for Heatley to Getzlaff. Getzlaff taken down hard. Heatley plays that in front on the stick of Zarepov. Heatley kicking it. Wow. Up what a battle. On shoulder. Zarepov oh. reaching for it. Heatley wins the battle again. At the line is Jovanovski. Jovanovski across the key. Sends that in front, just missed Nash. Jovanovski plays it down for Nash. Back in front, gets left, taps it back to Jovanovski. He shoots his skate in front. Rebound, gets left, turned away by Nabokov. Under two to go now. And the minor penalty. In comes Gets left. Drops it off for Nash. Nash in front. Waits. Plays it across for Keith, that hopped away from him. Now Keith shoots the mock up the save. Rebound, gets left, reaching for it. The puck's still loose. Keith, down for Nash. Wheels it back for Jovanovski. In for Nash. Nash, back to Keith. Nash, loose in front, shoots, loose puck. Healy bats at it, the mock has got it. One of the ways to break down the Russian player. Keep the puck in their zone and make them work. And that's what we're seeing. The Russians really have thrived on the penalty kill in terms of being aggressive. But you see the time and space for Canada. Look at all that gap for Rick Nash because the Russian defenders are out of gas. You talked about the big line for Canada being out of gas. The Russian players that are defending in that situation, they're sucking dirty pond water off of that. And look at the fatigue on Evgeny Nabokov. Tons and tons of time on ice. And he's got to move side to side all the time in a hot building where that wears you out. Shots are 14 to 5, Canada. This is Taves with Roy and Doan up front. And Brent Burns back out there for Roy. Eric Roy. Looking back at Burns. Drops it down instead for Taves. Taves loose in the corner. Drops it back for Burns. Into the corner. Doan battling for it. Plays it there for Roy. For Taves. Taves walks in. Shoots. And at the back of the leg of Ilya Nikulin. Pulled out by Roy. There is Chenko fed it across, and Nikulin able to play it out. Under a minute to go on the power play, and Afinagenov was all over Brent Burns. Maxim Afinagenov playing on the fourth line for the Russians. Green up for Taves. Taves plays that across. The pass is broken up. Tereschenko with it. Alexei Tereschenko wants a Dallas draft pick. Lost the puck to Doe. Now Tereschenko falls and plays it out. Mike Green settles things down. 30 seconds to go on the power play. Green. Pass through the middle for San Luis. Lifts that high in the air. Knocked down by Morozov. Now Morozov is 
The puck is touched by San Luis. That's called offside. Alexi Morozov, first round pick of Pittsburgh back in 1995. Top forward last year at the World Championship, although Nash was the MVP. And that's the strange thing that the awards are voted on by different people. So you could be the top forward, but someone else could be the MVP. Who's a forward? Yeah, well, Alexi Morozov can't take the pay cut to come back to the NHL. He's making too much. He'd be a cap buster in the NHL. He might be the best player outside the National Hockey League. At this point. Off the face off. Kalina leaves it there. Danny Markov takes a swipe at it. And it bounces down to Steve Stales. There's a guy that played for the Sarnia Sting this year. You might have heard of him. Steven Stamkos. He's pretty good too. He's pretty darn good. <laughs> we'll give Morozov the veteran experience. Well, the European distinction. Yeah, okay. In comes Jovanovski. Wrist shot. Blocked in front. Jovanovski battling back for it. Kroskin back on the ice. Now Kunitz. Working down low is Chris Kunitz. Drops it there for Stahl. Stahl loose behind the goal. Eric Stahl battles. Stahl still with it. A four-goal game for Stahl early in this tournament. One off the modern-day Canadian record. Back of the line is Steve Stale. He tees it up. They didn't stick. Morozov's away. They're trying to find him. Zinoviev. Away with Kroskin. In comes Kroskin. Russia changing. Morozov stripped of the puck by San Luis. And it's banged in by Chimera. One minute to go in the first period. And both these teams are going to need the break. In comes Alexander Ovechkin. He shoots off the stick of Stales and wide. Semin tees it up. That goes high off the glass to Fedorov. Battling with Stales. Patrick Sharp. Crunched there by Ovechkin. Loose along the wall for Semin. He got clipped with a high stick. Penley coming up to Canada. Semin works it back on the stick of Chimera. And with 37 seconds left in the first period, Russia is going to the power play. And their power play hasn't been great, Gord. Nine for 48 in the tournament. That's ninth overall in the tournament. But the problem for Canada is Patrick Sharp, one of the better penalty killers for Canada, and also a tremendous face-off guy, as you said. And you'll see the slash coming right there on Alexander Semin. And with Sharp being a right-hand shot, this would be a perfect place for him to take the face-off. Shane Doan, a right-hand shot, is going to come in against Fedorov. They tangle it up. Fedorov wins it back. Ilya Kovalchuk shoots. That pinball's wide off Ovechkin. Seven with it. At the line. Kovalchuk can't hold it. Kovalchuk and Markov on the back end for the Russians. Check that Korneyev back there. Now Ovechkin. Seven. And Fedorov up front. This Washington Capital line, which has wreaked havoc on this tournament. Now Kunitz. Off the leg of Doan and down the ice. Nice piece of puck handling by Cam Ward. That's not an easy play in this building because there's some really funny bounces off the stanchions. Final seconds now. Play down in the Canadian zone. That shot by Ovechkin comes on an offside. 2.5 seconds remaining in the opening period. Well, Russia got the lead and then Cano battled back with three straight goals. Great start for Vyacheslav Bikov's team. Cano just reeled it in in a hurry. Hard to believe that Russia has not won the World Championship since 1993. That was the first year after the collapse of the Soviet Union. One of the big problems for Russia, well, two. One has been goaltending. The second has been getting their best players to come, and when they do, getting them to get along. Ilya Kovalchuk threatened to boycott the tournament a couple of years ago unless the coach was fired. And it was his coach from the Russian League. Kovalchuk fires it down, and Canada will go to the dressing room with a 3-1 lead after one period of play. Our first intermission is coming up. Prime Minister Stephen Harper will be our guest. We're back right after this. And the score is 3-1 Team Canada after one in this gold medal matchup. A rocking jam-packed Coliseum in Quebec City. And in amongst the fans is uh, one of Canada's uh, most famous hockey fans, Prime Minister Stephen Harper, who just spoke with our Gord Miller. Well, Prime Minister, what do you think so far? I'm nervous, but it's nice to be here. It's a great game, great game. Uh, you know, after the first shift, we, shift, we've been dominating. So I think with this team, as long as we can keep the play in their end and keep the puck away from some of these Russian scorers, we should be in good shape. You know, you're a member of the Society of International Hockey Research, a real hockey historian. I wonder what you think about the significance of this event being held in Canada for the first time. Well, it's actually amazing when you think about it, the International Hockey Tournament, World Hockey Tournament being, being held in Canada for just the first time. But, you know, of course, until very recently, international hockey was really European hockey. 
And, you know, we've seen this cross-pollinization with the NHL in Europe, and I think it's a great thing that's being held here, and hopefully we can put the icing on the cake by taking home the gold. Would you like to see it again? Absolutely. It's, uh, it's great hockey. I think some, some people might want to see it on the bigger ice surface for something different, but uh, it's, been a, it's been a great tournament here in Quebec City and Halifax. Well, both cities have been tremendous hosts, and here in Quebec City, there's so many people talking about the Nordiques who left all those years ago. What would you think about the National Hockey League coming back to places like Quebec City and even Winnipeg? Well, it'd be great. It'd be great for them to come back here. You know, they, they've certainly got the fan base. Quebec City, they're great sports fans. The trouble you got, what's uphill, is obviously the TV rights, small TV market, and not a lot of corporate sponsors, which is what you, you know, professional sports owners tell me you really need in the modern game. But uh, they'll push here, and let's uh, let's hope we can get some more Canadian franchises. You kick some money in? Uh, well, I <laughs> always careful with the taxpayers' money. I. Our, our philosophy is pro sports should be able to pay for, for itself, but, uh, you know, we'll lend what moral support we can. Prime Minister, thank you. Enjoy the rest of the yeah, game. Thanks a lot, Gord. <laughs> How about Gord? Hey, <laughs> leaning on the PM there. It is uh, all Canada right now, and Brent Burns is stepping up in a big way. It is 3-1. After one, analysis next. First period scoring summary brought to you by the totally new Chevrolet Malibu, the 2008 North American Car of the Year. Russia scored first, Alexander Simon, but then Canada gets three goals on 15 shots, two of them from Brent Burns. Back to Quebec City here again, Gord and Pierre. Thank you very much, Dave. Russia has a minute and 23 seconds of power play time remaining. Canada was on the power play for eight and a half minutes in the first period. Russia for just 37 seconds. But they'll have one here to start this second period. Four goals scored in the first, only one scored in the power play. Brent Burns scoring on the two-man advantage. And watch for the right-handed shooting. Kovalchuk on the back side. He's open for the one-timer. He's got the puck now, so four forwards on the ice for Russia. You've got Kovalchuk, who's won the Rocket Richard. You've got Ovechkin, who won the Rocket Richard this year. Pretty good power play. Yeah. Sergei Fedorov was the MVP of the league once. And he had 56 goals in 1994, so he doesn't get the back of the net in a hurry. And if Rick Nash killed penalties, you could throw him out there as a Rocket Richard <laughs> Trophy winner, too. <laughs> Kovalchuk for Fedorov. Sergei Fedorov down low. Alexander Seven feeds that in front. Bouncing puck swept away by Ward. Now Ward battling for it. Don't rather battling for it. In comes Seven. Rolling puck. Racing to it as Dan Hamuse on his backhand. Off the leg of Seven and kept alive. In comes Seven. Got around Dan Hamuse, but Hamuse stripped him of the puck. At the line, Cornea. Kovalchuk misfired in that shot. His Ooh. stick shattered in his hands. How about the strength of Ovechkin right there to knock Bolmister off the puck? That is impressive. In comes Semen. Ovechkin down low. Fedorov working in front. Konstantin Cornea plays it across. Andre Markov. Wrist shot was blocked by Bolmister. Semen blocked by Bolmister again. At the line, kept alive by Markov. Cornea shoots off the inboards and wide. Semen on the rebound, scores! Alexander Semen brings the Russians within one. Canada had three different opportunities to get that puck out, and they didn't get it out. And any time you've got an electrifying scorer like Semen and another guy like Ovechkin, chances are the more time you spend in your own zone, they're going to find the back of the net. Korneyev does a good job, 22 in red, getting the puck through. It's wide, but the crazy lively boards provi provides a great carom for Alexander Semen. You see him, he just gets it and whips it on goal. He doesn't even try to settle that puck down off the boards. What that is an unbelievably skillful play. What a one-timer by Semin. And that's his second goal of the game. The sixth goal he scored this year on Cam Ward going back to the NHL. And it shows you why you've got to get pucks out when you're playing against a top skill team like Russia. You can't spend extra time in your own zone. So Russia strikes on the power play and it's now back to a one-goal lead. Out come Nash. Heatley and gets laugh for Canada. Rick Nash working on Ilya Nikulin. Got spun around by Zenobiev. At the line, Steos holds his ground, but now Zenobiev bounces it out. Zarapov drops it there for Zenobiev. Loose puck in front, and Cam Ward will gobble that up as Ed Jovanovsky battles with Sergei Zenobiev. Well, this is the first time we've seen Canada, who has the last change, change Getzlaff, Heatley, and Nash away from that big line. I know they're just coming off of a power play situation. But this is maybe a little in-game adjustment by Ken Hitchcock. Beekoff wants to get more of a matchup against this big line for Canada. So he's coming out with checkers right now. 
Baba Bikov, a no-nonsense guy. Last year when Alexander Semen arrived a day late due to some miscommunication for the training camp, Bikov sent him home. He's glad he didn't this year. Makes the puck is Maxima Finneganov. Finneganov sends that in front, tipped wide by Tereschenko. Burns wins the battle for the puck to Heatley, and he muscles it out. And the Colisee is rocking on this Sunday afternoon. Don't tell me there shouldn't be NHL hockey in this city. This city's ready. They need an NHL team. You can have NHL hockey in Nashville, Tennessee, in Florida, in Miami. You can have NHL hockey here and Winnipeg. Tereschenko sends it across the pin again. Off feeds that in front. Radulov got spun around by Rick Nash. The referee's not buying. Radulov, a tremendous junior here for the Quebec Ramparts, won the Memorial Cup with him, was the CHL Player of the Year. Had 61 goals in 62 games. And if you count the playoffs, he had 82 goals in 85. It's unbelievable. Eric Stahl works it in deep. Stahl in front for Spezza. Jason Spezza, rolling puck, got away from him. Sam away to Spezza. That went between his feet to Ilya Kovalchuk. Eric Stahl steps into him. Now Stahl with it. Eric Stahl whips it back to Mike Green. Green shot through Trevor, hit right on the buck. Have a great reaction save. That's the magic of Mike Green. He doesn't need much of an opening to get pucks to the net. This is Green back with it. Plays it ahead for San Luis, a rolling puck, crisscrossing with Stahl. In comes Eric Stahl, back in front, just missed Jovanovski. Now Jovanovski down low. San Luis covering his point. Jovanovski races back. Shashinsky is in behind the Canadian defense. But they can't find him with the pass. Set play because it's a long play in the second half of the second period for the change. In comes Spezza. Drops it back for Derek Roy. Roy in, shoots. It goes off the leg of Prushkin and wide. This is Ovechkin. Quickly tapping it for Semen. Semen works his way in. Hey, Bowmister staying with him, and they collide in the corner. Ham Hughes just missed by Ovechkin, and he moved the puck there to Roy. Eric Roy jumps across the line with Doan, who stays on side. Trebishkov steps up. And Doan steps into him. And now Semen pounds it ahead for Ovechkin. In behind Bowmister. Ovechkin in, shoot, stopped by Cam Ward. What a save by Ward. Let's see what the Russians are doing tactically, Gord. They're looking for the stretch pass in a complete obliteration by Ovechkin on Hamus, who's slow getting up and going to the Canadian bench. Now Tave drops. Bowmister in, shoots. Nabokov makes the save. And Dan Hamus was leveled by Alexander Ovechkin behind the play. And this is where Ovechkin is so lethal. He's great one-on-one. -on -one. Bowmister comes back, and because of the six-foot-four frame, he forces Ovechkin into a tough situation. Hamus never sees Ovechkin coming. He feels the pressure from Fedorov. Right there, Ovechkin just obliterates him. That's what Ovechkin does well, Gord. He knows the guys he's playing against, and he makes them feel pain. And there's the magic of Mike Green. Doesn't need a big opening to get that puck to Eric Stahl, who puts it right on the Bokov, who makes a good redirection save. Sharp, Mayers, and Chimera, the forward line for Canada. And Jamal Mayers gave Canada a huge boost in the semis against the Swedes with a big goal. Tenovia hey, plays it out, and Duncan Keith retreats. Craig McTavish, who's running the Canadian defense, he's got to be aware of the long stretch pass the Russians are trying to utilize now and tell that to the defense. Another example there. Here comes Morozov. In. Backhand shot. Stopped by Ward. Time for the Canadian defense to make the adjustment, Gord. It's going to be tough if they don't. Sharp. Ahead for Chimera. He plays it ahead. Mayers one-on-one -on -one with Markov. Jamal Mayers. Poke check by Markov. And Markov plays it there again for Morozov. That'll be icing. Red Burns hammers it in, but that's icing against the Canadians. A face-off down in the Canadian zone where Russians have been streaking in with regularity. They really have, and Rozov right here going right in on Brent Burns. Cam Ward with a nice paddle save, getting that away from danger. That's what I like about that. No second chance if it's out in the corner. Rozov, as you said, Gord, considered probably the best European player outside the NHL. Electric atmosphere here. Oh. It was great in Halifax, and it's been unbelievable here. A great old building. Opened in 1951 to accommodate basically one man. Jean Beliveau. And then the Montreal Canadiens bought the league he played in to get him to Montreal. Mr. Selkie did that. Those were the Saint days. Huh? Here? That, that, would be, that would be a serious cap violation yeah, now if you bought a league. Ever. Yeah, we'll just buy that league. Pretty good player played here for the Quebec Rampart, too. Guy Lafleur. At the line, Danny Markov. 
Plays it there for Finnegan. Off being watched by Nash. Loose puck for Jovanovski. And he banks it ahead for Danny Heatley. Nabokov plays it there for Danny Markov. Nine NHL seasons for Markov. Went back to Russia this year. And there's a long lead pass again for Finneganov. In comes the Finneganov. Stripped of the puck by Jovanovski. Now Jovanovski and a Finneganov battle down in the corner. To the open wing. Getzlaff races to it. Ryan Getzlaff. Up for Danny Heatley. Trying to get around Dmitry Kalinin. Out to play it is Nabokov. And he drops it there for Kalinin. In the NHL, that would have been a penalty outside of the uh, little triangle there. Trapezoid. Tereschenko works in, shoots, Ward makes the save, a long rebound. And Eric Stahl is away, working on Fedor Tutin. The puck in Tutin's feet, and he plays it away. Too bad it was because Chris Kunitz was in all alone. In comes Salloway with Stahl. Martin Salloway on Fedor Tutin, sends it in front for Stahl. He was tied up by Markov. And the Russian net has become dislodged and play is called. Danny Markov got away with one right there. Tutin did a good job on Marty St. Louis, but Stahl beat Markov to the net, and Markov can't get to the bench quick enough. It's a great job by Tutin. Yeah, he has a free hand out. You see Danny Markov, his stick was in Stahl skates, his body was in Stahl skates, and there it's a good opportunity for Stahl to get to the puck. He just can't. The Russians have been very resilient in this tournament. They trailed Belarus 2-0, came back to win that one in a shootout. They trailed the Czechs 4-3 in the third. Korneyev tied it. And then Alexei Morozov won it in overtime. This is Stahl with Kunitz and San Luis. And Stahl wins the drawback. Duncan Keith, who scored 12 goals for Chicago this year, plays it down for Stahl. Trying to jam it in front, turned away by Nabokov. And Stahl battling down there with Proshkin. At the line, it's chipped out. And Chushinsky sends that ahead for Zarapov. Zarapov. And the puck at the line was bouncing, and Dorovkov couldn't hold it. Now away comes Kunitz with Stahl in front. Eric Stahl had that bounce off his stick. He was all That's alone. a penalty. And now the puck has gone out again. And the officials are conferring. It looks as though Canada will have the power play when we come back. Back here in Quebec City, Konstantin Gorobakov has gone off for delay of game, putting the puck over the glass, and Canada is on the power play. Gets left. Nash and Heatley up front, but the Russians control off the faceoff, and they play it ahead for Semin. Brett Burns, who along with Semin has two goals in this game, plays it there for Green. Through the middle for Nash. Nash to Heatley. Leading the tournament in goals and points, Heatley falls, and Sergei Fedorov plays it back down to the Canadian zone. Mike Green, the Calgary native. That pass too far for Burns, and Green will have to regroup. Look out. Vinovi have almost stole that and went in alone. Now Burns drops it off for Heatley. Bouncing puck, Nikulin plays it ahead. And away comes Zinoviev, one-on-one with Green. Zinoviev with Morozov. And Zinoviev will just slowly take it back. Andre Markov. Or Zinoviev gets around, gets left. In comes Zinoviev, shoots. That goes off a leg and wide. Too much complacency from Canada on this power play. They got to get back to grinding, get it in deep like Derek Roy's doing. In comes Derek Roy. Nabokov poke checked him neatly. Heatley reaching for it. Loose puck in the corner. At the line, kept in by Mike Green. He tees it up and whistled it wide. Roy on the rebound, had it hop over his stick. Now Roy feeds it in front. Heatley taps that for Jovanovski. Cornea. Plays it there for Morozov with Zinovia. They need a change, but they stay on the ice. Morozov shoots. Cam Ward gloves that and knocks it away. 30 seconds to go on this Canadian power play. Jovanovski up for Derek Roy. 32 goals at Buffalo this year. In comes Roy. Dropping it back to Jovanovski. Jovanovski in. Shoots. Nabokov makes the save. Loose puck. They bat away at it. Nabokov finally has it. As two Canadians got a swipe at it. Derek Roy and Ed Jovanovski. It's more of the determined effort you need if you're Canada on the power play. All this too cool for school stuff on the outside isn't going to work. Get pucks to the goal and then get bodies to the goal. Taves is there, Roy's there, Jovanovski's there. Get bodies to the net. Create rebound opportunities and slam some pucks home. Spets it's talking to Duncan Keith on this draw. It'll be Spetsa, Stahl, and San Luis up front. Keith and Burns on the back end. Scramble draw, pulled out by Fedor to 
And Zeripov will bang that down the ice. Jam Ward up to play it. Look out. Plays that off the side of the net. Everyone catching their collective breath here in Quebec. And San Louis away with Stahl. Play remains onside. San Louis got spun around out of the box. Comes Gorbkov. Gorbkov drops it back. Tereschenko into the corner. Zeripov trying to center it. And Eric Stahl gathers it up. Stahl. Three Russians converge on him, and Stahl comes away with a puck. Plays it in deep. Spetzel will make his way off on a chain. Now racing up is Duncan Keith. Zeripov squeezes it by him. Tereschenko away. Sends it ahead to Gorobakov, and his shot goes off the leg of Burns. Burns. One hands out ahead for Stahl. Fedorov spun him around and took the puck away. Now Fedorov. Nifty move at center ice. A maestro. Sergei Fedorov. All kinds of jump. Plays that wide of the goal. Seven looking for it. Ovechkin parked in front. Seven shoots. Ward makes the save. Juggles the rebound. And Ovechkin bumping with Burns. Wins the battle with the puck. And that puck goes up. And out of play, and we're going to face off with 10.30 to go in the second period. 65 goals this season for Alexander Ovechkin. Bent Burns, two goals so far in this game. And tons of Canadian passion and Russian energy in this building. And there is a good-sized Russian contingent here as well. And, of course, we should not forget when talking about the Colisee, one of the great events ever played here, Rendezvous 1987. Dikoff, the Russian coach, was tremendous in that one. Cam Hughes off the face-off win, ahead for Getzlaff. Bouncing puck, Nikulin plays it out. And this is Zinoviev, along with Kovalchuk and Morozov. Bouncing puck, Nash gets to it. And this is Getzlaff, in ahead for Heatley. Danny Heatley busting in. Heatley still with it. And he'll play it down low for Getzlaff. Loose behind the Russian goal. In comes Getzlaff, looking in front. Heatley shoots, score! Danny Heatley! Problem for every team in this tournament, and Stephen Harper knows it as well. There's no match for this line. There's no defender in this tournament right now that has the size or the athleticism to shut down Getzlaff, Heatley, or Nash. And all three of them touch the puck. Getzlaff touches it, he got it from Nash. Heatley finishes a playoff, and Nash goes to the net. Every single one of those forwards touched the puck before Danny Heatley beat it, getting the block off short side because of the lightning quick release. That is the biggest issue in this term for everybody that has to play Canada. There is no answer so far for the big three from Canada. And Danny Heatley has just set the modern-day Canadian record for most goals in one world championship. That is his 12th, surpassing the 11, scored by Eric Lindros in Germany in 1993. And Ken Hitchcock's not messing around. He's coming with energy guys right after the goal. He wants to sustain momentum. Chimera, Sharp, and Spezza. Imagine calling Jason Spezza an energy guy. That's how much he's improved in this tournament. And by the way, Heatley now with two points in the game has tied Steve Eiserman's record for most points in one world championship. 20 back in 1990. Heatley, Getzlaff, Nash, just tremendous chemistry. Bam. 4-2. 9.55 to go here in the second period. Danny Heatley has now scored in five straight games for Canada. And Patrick Sharp bats it down to the Russian zone. Kalina sidestepped to check. The puck was almost intercepted there by Jason Spezza. Now Spezza with it. Works his way in front. Sends it across for Chimera. Loose puck for Sharp. Sharp spins. Sends that in front. Tip right on accidentally by Tereschenko. And Jason Spezza was standing right there. It's Jason Spezza out of character, but again, this tournament's helped him so much. And the crowd is responding to what Gord just told you about Danny Heatley. And they have announced, I believe, the record here at the Coliseum. Yep, they have. But Jason Spezza just so improved in this tournament. I give Ken Hitchcock and his staff a ton of credit and Jason Spezza for buying in, Gord. And if you thought the Russians were stretching before. Yeah, well, they're going to stretch now. But now if you're Ken, you don't need defenseman back. You also have to have a third forward back. You've got to make sure you have a third body back. Kicked ahead for Jonathan Taves. Taves in on Grebyshkov. Taves still with it. Jonathan Taves plays it back. Hamus in. Lines fires off the end boards and wide. Grebyshkov with it. And Grebyshkov lifts it ahead. Jay Bomister broke that up. Bomister's seen seven and Ovechkin a time or two playing in the Southeast Division 
for the Florida Panthers. Maybe it is nightmares, too. Going with it. Doan shoots Nabokov, gets a pat on that. Ovechkin <laughs> collides with Taves, who got crunched there by Grebeshkov as well. Roy to Bowmister. High in the air and around the boards. Canada is changing. Konstantin Kornea ahead for seven. Boy, these guys take long shifts, don't they? They do. They're trying to break down the matchup. That's why they take long shifts. It's a Yarmir Yager trick, and it usually works. Mary Lemieux used to do it as well. So did Gretzky. There's Seven. another one. Long Look lead out. pass right in the tape of Ovechkin. Ovechkin in, shoots. He whistled that wide. See, they're just stretching out the Canadian defense, and Ed Jovanovski's in good position, Gord, but there's not many. We talked about the tough matchup against Canada's big guys. This is a tough play for Ed Jovanovski. He's not used to being on the right-hand side of the ice. He plays on the left side for Team Canada. And usually his partner is Steven Stavis. And there's Ovech or Ovechkin again just blowing up on Shane. Or, uh, Shane don't come in and help out on Jonathan Taves. Face off in the Canadian zone. Zinoviev wins it away from Eric Stahl. Long drive by Korneyev. That goes just wide of the goal. San Luis was streaking ahead for Canada. They couldn't find him. Morozov looking for it. And it squeezes by Ilya Nikulin. And that'll be icing against Team Canada. 8.09 to go in the second period. Canada has won five straight against Russia at the World Championship. The last loss was in 1996. Sergei Zinoviev spent 10 games in the NHL in 03 and 04 with the Boston Brewers. He had one assist. Then he spent four games in the NHL. And he says, you know what? I'm going home. I'm tired of this. I can make me more money at home. And he said the Russian Super League, a far better league than the American League, which offended some in North America. Nifty move by Kovalchuk on Steyos. Kovalchuk. And now Stahl steps up on him, takes the puck away, and it's batted out by San Luis. Nikulin wraps it around, and San Luis won that battle with Ilya Kovalchuk, and they know each other well, too. Morozov plays it down for Kovalchuk. Loose in front, great save by Cam Ward. Point blank on Zinoviev. Now San Luis with it, and these Russian defenders are gassed. In comes Kunitz with Stahl and San Luis. Kunitz whips it across. San Luis turned away by Nabokov. What a save by Nabokov. And San Luis knocked out, and the puck was played with a high stick. End to end action. And Canada leads by two. Ken Hitchcock's first time as a Canadian national team head coach. He was supposed to be the head coach of the 1990 World Junior Team. And there's a look at the save by Cam Ward on Zenobia of a moment ago as he flashes out the left pad and makes an unbelievable stop. Nice feed by Kovalchuk as well. Mike Green. Steps away from Zarapov. Now Zarapov with it. Sends it in front. And that pass missed Konstantin Gorovikov. Strong side defenseman for Rush is now stepping up as well. In that situation was Fedor Tutin. Seen that a lot coming up now. Coming from behind for the Russians. In comes Ryan Getzlaff on Prushkin. Getzlaff still with it, pulls it down low for Nash. He collides with Tootin. Nash battling with Tootin. Heatley comes in to help out, and now it's picked up by Zarapov. Rink wide for Shashinsky. Maxim Shashinsky works his way in front, rolling puck, knocked away by Getzlaff. Now Zarapov with it. Zarapov loose behind the goal, feeds that in front, and Getzlaff knocked that pass out of midair and out. They score a lot, Pierre, and they have not been scored against much. Semin works his way in, feeds it in front. Ovechkin flashed on the one-timer. How often do you see that? Fourth line against first line. Fourth line for Canada against the first line right now, the Russians. Spezza banks it ahead. Sharp cannot get a stick on it, and that's icing against the Canadians. And you can change because of this is not like the NHL. You can change if you're Ken Hitchcock because of the icing. In the NHL, you couldn't, and that's exactly what Ken Hitchcock's going to do. Alexander Ovechkin isn't going to whiff very often. He whiffs right there, and Ken Hitchcock says, you know what, I've seen enough. So out comes Shane Doan, Jonathan Taves, and Derek Roy. Good bench maneuvering by Hitchcock. Very strong. Shots on goal are 9-6 Russia here in the second period. Draw one by the Russians, but it gets all the way by Grebishkov. And Korneyev has to sweep back and pick it up. At the line, Dan Hamhuis for Derek Roy, along with Jonathan Taves and Shane Doan. Taves is Canada's gold luck charm. <laughs> he's won gold in all three tournaments he's played oh. in. And Taves just missed on Ovechkin and lost his stick. Now Doan works his way in, the Canadian captain. Doan down low for Taves. The puck took a funny bounce off the end boards. Bowmister on the back end. And Doan took a run at Cornea. Taves in front. Doan shoots. He missed just wide. 
And that wayward stick getting in the way. Here's Doan. To Roy. To Hamu. Shoots. Stopped by Nabokov with all kinds of traffic in front. And that's part of what Ken Hitchcock wants. Ovechkin and Semin and Fedorov can't be good if they're defending. So the offense won't get working. So that's exactly what you want. If you're Ken Dryden or Tretriak, <laughs> if you're Dryden, you're saying, man, I faced a lot of shots like that. And if you're Tretriak, said, I had a lot of success against shots like that. Danny what a matchup Hamm. they had on Ooh, New Year's boy. Eve 1975 and a standing ovation for those two in the building. Both of them are in the political field right now. They are. Although Mr. Tretriak's political minefield is a much tougher one to navigate. Yes. <laughs> and there's no map. <laughs> no, there is not. Good job. His old friend Slava Fatisov is the minister of, minister of sport in Russia. Maybe not for long. Radulov walks in. That puck rolls off his stick. And away comes Chimera with Sharp and Spezza. Jason Chimera works his way in. Feeds it there for Sharp. Steered away by Nabaka. Back the other way come the Russians. Radulov. Outlet pass there for Finneganov. Maximum Finneganov busting in as Steve Stales took that away. Kalinin plays it in. Finneganov oh. rips a shot. Blocked in front. A great block by Stales. And he slowly makes his way to the Canadian bench. Actually, doing it all tournament long, Gord Steve Stales. Stay in the play. Finneganov dropping it back. Now Radulov fires that high and wide. Tereschenko. Long drive. That's tipped just high. And the crowd again gasping. Steos up ahead for Chimera. Nabokov plays it across for Andre Markov. There's again, they got Kans got to do a better job adjusting this stretch pass. Morozov bites off a check, plays it there for Kovalchuk. Bouncing puck sent in front by Morozov. And now sweeping out of the stall, race for the puck. Kunitz and Andre Markov. In comes Kunitz and he battles with Markov. Wow. Kunitz wins the fight for the puck. At the line, Duncan Keith steps up. And Zinovi have had a look at Morozov, who was streaking down in the Canadian zone. In comes Kovalchuk. Ilya Kovalchuk shoots, pad save, rebound, all oh, fired wide by Markov. Now Nakula with a shot. That's blocked by Martin San Luis. Stall shaken up as San Luis makes his way in. He tees it up, and Nabokov makes the glove save. These two are living up to the hype. And Cam Ward is living up to a big time. Kovalchuk with a lightning quick release, a juicy rebound, and the puck just goes by Cam Ward past the left post. And Andre Markov of the Montreal Canadiens, not happy about that at all. He played in his first All-Star game this year. He is a potential Norris Trophy nominee at some point in his career. What a tandem the Canadiens have with him and Mike Komisarek. He was the top defenseman in last year's World Championship in Moscow. Gets laughed. Tried to drop it back for Ham Hughes, but he retreated from the line. Dan Ham Hughes of the Nashville Predators. Up ahead for Ryan Getzlaff. Getzlaff plays it there for Heatley. In with Nash. Nash loose it, but backhand shot. Stick and broke. a sprawling Korneyev. Managed to get a block on that as Nash's stick broke. Now Ovechkin. Nash has a new stick. Ovechkin trying to bust through. Bullmister closes on him along with Nash. Ovechkin still with it. Flips it back. Korneyev. Tees it up, shoots. Ward made the save, and that was just out of the reach of Ovechkin. Heatley, as Canada changes, sends that in deep. Ken Hitchcock wants liver legs against that big line for Russia. He'll get Taves along with Doan and Roy out there. Burns plays it ahead. Doan missed the pass. Too many men on the ice, Russia. Too many men on the ice. Clearly too many men on the ice. And not detected, and the Canadians are screaming. And the fans are too knowledgeable fans here in Quebec. They had some pretty good players here over the years. Yes, they did. <laughs> Wrapped along the boards. Taves can't get to it. Markov keeps on alive for the Russians. Shoots knocked down in front by Keith. Now Finneganov plays it back. Markov. Finneganov plays it across. Kalini was all tied up. And that puck appeared to come out and now does as Taves plays it. Kalina works his way ahead and poke check by Brent Burns. Finneganov plays it down there for Tereschenko. Now Radulov with it. Muscled off the puck by Keith. Keith loose behind the goal, can't find anywhere to go. Radulov takes it away from him. Alexander Radulov bumping now with Roy. Up ahead for Sharp. He takes a whack at it and another. And Roy sends it ahead. Jason Spezza, one-on-one -on -one with McCoolin. Spezza in, gets around him. Puck rolled off his stick to Tereschenko. Now Tereschenko 
Up for Kowalchuk. He whistles that wide. And Spezza with it. Trying to chip it out. And Jovanovski looking for Chimera. That's icing against Canada. 126 to go in an action-packed second period. You said this would be one of the special games, and it certainly has been because of the physical attack, because of the skill level, because of the speed, and because of the guy that are willing to sell out for their respective countries. I mean, this has just been great end-to-end, -end, hard nose hockey, with a little explosion there from Bo Mr. and Nash on Alexander Ovechkin. Zinoviev lost that face off to Getzlaff. Now Steos wraps that high off the glass. It bounced down in front to Zinoviev. Kovalchuk tees it up. His shot was blocked by Getzlaff. And Getzlaff with a long reach sweeps it out. It's a guy that gets winning. Even star players have to block shots. Ryan Getzlaff won a Stanley Cup. He gets it. Zinoviev working on Jovanovski. Now fed in front. Nikulin walks in. Fires Cam Ward. Makes the save. And the rebound cleared. Final minute now of this second period. Oh, that pass hits Zinoviev in the face. And he shakes the bees out of his bonnet. And now Steos goes ahead for Getzlaff. Getzlaff wires it in. Bounces strangely in the corner and hit the side of the goal. You gotta watch that corner. Kunitz, fresh legs off the bench. Plays it in deep for the Canadian captain, Shane Doan. He gave Nabokov a bump. Now Doan with it. Plays it down for Jonathan Taves. Taves too far for Doan. And this is Ovechkin with it. Long pass ahead for Andre Markov. The Russians are changing. In comes Fedorov. Cops there for seven. Seven in front. Shoots. That pass was blocked. And now Doan with it. High in the air. And back goes Korneyev to pick it up. Ten seconds to go in the period. Krebishkov intercepted by Kunitz. Kunitz tees it up. That floats high and wide. Now Stahl racing to it. And Canada will go to the dressing room with a 4-2 lead and a chance in the third to win the world championship on home ice for the very first time. Here's the second period scoring summary brought to you by Nivea for men, what men want. Two goals, Seven with his second of the game, Heatley with his 12th of the championship. He has a goal and an assist. Back to Quebec City for the third period. Gord Miller and Pierre Maguire. And so here we go. Canada with a two-goal lead in the first gold medal game of a world championship ever played on Canadian ice. This tournament coming to Canada for the first time in the 100-year history of the International Ice Hockey Federation. And this gold medal game has delivered in spades. Games begin five on five. Zinoviev wins the draw away from Stahl. Lord, the AK Bars Kazan line is back together. Zarepov right now with Zinoviev and Morozov. And Andre Markov in the back end through the middle. Morozov drops it off for Zinoviev. Off the end boards, and are they ever live? Here's a chance for Zarepov bouncing it in front. And Green takes that away. For San Louis with Chris Kunitz. Bouncing puck in the corner. Kunitz bumping there with Nikula. Now San Luis pulls it out. Kunitz in front. That pass was blocked. Zarepov. Goes rink wide for Morozov. That hopped away from him. He's got Ed Jovanovski in his face. San Luis steps around Nikulin. Centering pass broken up by Markov. Quickly ahead for Sergei Fedorov. He's got Ovechkin with him. Rolling puck in front. Steered away by Dan Hamhuse. And you will see a lot of Dan Hamhuse and Jay Bowmister here in the third period. They played nearly half the third period against Sweden. Ovechkin gets spilled by Derek Roy. You'll be seeing a lot of Ovechkin, too, my friend. Yeah. Konstantin Korneyev almost turned that puck over to Shane Doan. Now Doan fighting for the puck along the wall. Taves with it. Rolling puck in front. Taves taking a shot away. Now Roy shoots. Blocked in front. Taves plays it across from his knees. Couldn't reach Roy. Doan taken down. And away comes Semin with Fedorov and Ovechkin. Ovechkin loose on the left side. Seven sends it across. Ovechkin shoots that deflected wide. And Shane Doan settles it down. And this is a matchup change that Ken Hitchcock went with. Get the checkers, the big body presence of Doan and Taves against Ovechkin, against Semin, against Fedorov. So he's going power on power early on, and then he said, you know what? Power on power is not working for me, so I'm going with guys that get 30. And Ovechkin's a dangerous guy because he loves to get physical, but you see how Doan doesn't give an inch. 
And that's the first time we've seen Ovechkin really get backed off on a hit. And that's good coaching, again, by Ken Hitchcock. And you see that, Simon better be careful. I know he loves to have fun, and I know he likes to talk a little trash, but Shane Doan's not going to mess around today. And they might meet again. Oh, I think so. <laughs> I think there's a good chance of it. There's more interlocking play in the NHL now. Yes. At the line, Fedor Tutin tees it up, that deflects wide. On the back of the net to Brent Burns, who's got a pair in this game. Rick Nash chips it out. Now Burns finally plays it away. Ilya Kovalchuk works his way in. Kovalchuk shoots. Ward makes the stop and hangs on. And you'll sit at home and you'll say, this is a routine save. This is not a routine save. He's back and burns off the line. This is a guy that's won the Rocket and Shard Trophy. That's actually Duncan Keith, and he just snaps that. And that is right off the stick in a hurry. And if you play goal before, like Darren Pang has in the studio or anybody else watching, you know when it's through a screen with a quick release like Kovalchuk has, that is really dangerous. Ilya Kovalchuk, the first Russian ever to go first overall. There are four first overall NHL picks in this game. Zarepov leaves it there for Zinoviev. Penalty coming. coming. Penalty coming up. Kalinin fires wide. More is a wraparound. Tries sends it in front. And as Chimera touches it, Mr. Larkin is calling a hook against Canada, sending Russia to an early power play here in the third period. And go to Patrick Sharp. Face off situation in the Canadian zone. You lose a draw, and that's when everything starts to break down. And again, Patrick Sharp, the second penalty of the game. By the way, the four first overalls, Ed Jovanovski and Rick Nash for Canada, Alexander Ovechkin, and Ilya Kovalchuk for Russia. Wait till 2010 when Malkin and Crosby are playing. Malkin was second overall. Crosby obviously first. Now Morozov with it. Lexi Morozov trying to feed that in front. Cam Hughes intercepts, then he plays it out. Cam Hughes and Burns on the back end. Sam Louis and Stahl are the penalty killers up front for Canada. And it's Zarepov, Morozov, and Zinoviev up front. The AK bars Kazan line, as Pierre mentioned, back together. In comes Zinoviev. He was poke checked. Down low. Burns has a chance. Off the glass. Andre Markov keeps it alive. And off the leg of Martin San Louis it goes. Nikula. For Morozov. To Zarepov. Zarepov drops it back for Markov. Nikula. Back for Markov. Zarepov. Feeds that in front. Chipped away by Ham Hughes. Nikula elects not to shoot. Plays it there for Markov. Zarepov plays it back. Nikulin tees it up. Ward makes the stop. Rebound. Loose in front. Ham Hughes' the stick was tied up. Nikulin for Nikulin. Barkov walks in. Shoots. Ward to save. Rebound. Knocked away by Burns and out. Get a little taste of why Cam Ward, last year's gold medal starting goalie, and why he won the Conn Smythe with Carolina. Russians are changing. Markov drops it for Semen. Semen for Fedorov. Burns lost his stick. Now Ovechkin with it. At the line is Markov. Sweeps it across for Kovalchuk. Shoots! Ward got a piece of that. Fedorov's hurt. Sergei Fedorov was knocked down in front, and that puck is off the glass and out of play. And he's struggling getting to the bench right now. He's not even moving his feet. He got whacked around pretty good in the slot. It's a tough place to go hang out, especially at this time of the game. C29, Brent Burns just comes in, give him a little shot with the forearm. The right forearm gets... Better off. It's not the stick. It's the right forearm. And not surprisingly, they're checking his back. Zinoviev against Shane Doan. Zinoviev wins the draw. Korneyev keeps the puck alive. Shoots through traffic. Tipped just wide by Ovechkin. Now Semen with it. Back to Korneyev. Down low for Zinoviev. In front for Ovechkin. Drops it back. Kovalchuk in. Shoots. Ward makes the save. Juggles the rebound and hangs on. Kovalchuk's furious with himself. He just smashed himself in the head. He's not happy at all. He's got to finish that play off, and he knows it. Great skill from Ovechkin. He knows that Kovalchuk's right there. We've seen it earlier in this period. Kovalchuk, the right-hand shooter, coming down the left side, snapping one on goal. Cam Ward's got that rhythm down now. Just snaps it out of the air. Good battle by Semin down low, looking for that rebound, but the active glove. But Cam Ward thwarts any opportunity for Semin off the Kovalchuk shot. Jenko will face off against Getzlaff. Eight seconds to go in the Russian power play. Radulov. Battling along the wall. Jovanovski took him in hard. Jovanovski battling with Radulov. Puck in their feet. Penalized player Sharp is back on the ice. 
Now loose in front, Radulov shoots, Ward makes the save, loose puck in front, and Cam Ward gets the glove on that. Now's the time to play five on five. Little emotional push from the Russians, now Canada's got to stabilize. And it's basically become a chess match. Yeah, Canada's got a 4-2 lead, but the Russians have good pushback. Radulov walking off the wall, getting a pass. Finneganov battling down low, 61 in red. What Canada has trailed Pierre for less than four minutes the entire tournament. And playing with the lead here, Radulov, a backhand shot that goes off a leg and wide. And Nash chips that out. It deflects off a Russian, and icing was waved off as Dmitry Kalinin goes back. Kalinin had it intercepted by Nash. Nash down against Lav. He wheels that down in the corner and falls. Nash crunching Danny Marka. Tereschenko goes rink wide for a Finnegan off. Ed Jovanovski got a stick on that, or a Finnegan off was off to the races. And you see the difference in the second period when Jovanovski's on the right side, it's tough laterally for him to move. But in this situation, playing on the left side, he's much more comfortable. He and Steve Stales have been tremendous together. Ken Hitchcock's going to shorten the shifts up a little bit. It's starting to feel, it's a warm building, Gordon. We haven't seen this many people in the building during the tournament. It's been a warm, warm day here. And you can see it's getting warm in the building. No air conditioning here. Fedor Tutin is off the leg of Kunitz, looking for Morozov. Through the middle for Zinoviev, and Mike Green plays it out. San Luis looks ahead for Eric Stahl. He collides with Vitaly Prushkin. Serapov, rink wide for Morozov, working on Duncan Keene. In comes Morozov. Ward hands that, but the puck died in the crease. Now loose in front, Fedor Tutin. Wade speeds out in front, off a leg it goes, and away comes San Luis with Kunitz. San Luis across the line. Kunitz can't get a stick on that, as it was knocked away by Zenobia. Eric Stahl falls hard in the corner. And Zarapov sends that down to the Canadian zone. Here are Keith and Bowmister, the defenseman for Canada. Ahead to Derek Roy. In comes Roy. Nifty move. Roy backhand shot stuff. Loose puck in front. Don't shoot. Oh, it goes wide. Nabokov might have got a piece of that. Shane Doan was alone in front. Bowmister shoots. Tip. And that goes wide as well. Again, this matchup against the highly skilled Russian line of Fedorov, Semin, and Ovechkin working for Canada, especially because of the grinding on the wall from Doan and Taves. Shane Doan kicking it down low. Roy comes in, and now Andre Markov brings it out. A hit for Alexander Ovechkin. One on one with Jay Bowmister. And Bowmister knocks that away from him. The World Championship from Quebec City continues after this. You have a thought possible. <laughs> Russian fans hoping their team can crawl closer. They've erased two deficits earlier in the tournament. Won one game in a shootout, another in overtime. Two 8 no teams meeting in the gold medal game of the World Championship. Stales. Across for Jovanovski. And Jason Spezza. Lifts that ahead for Patrick Sharp. Say that again. People in Ottawa want to hear you say that. <laughs> <laughs> Jason Spezza shooting it in. Yes. Now you have Kovalchuk being harassed by Spezza. Spezza all over Kovalchuk. Now he spins around Chimera. Oh. Ed Jovanovski stepped up on him. Radulov with a puck. And Jovanovski sends it across and out. Kovalchuk in with Radulov. Kovalchuk sends it in front. Bouncing puck went off a stick. Korneyev shoots. That goes into the corner. Jovanovski lost the battle. The Radulov back at the line. Korneyev can't hold it. That pass was too hot for him. And they're running around in their own zone. Got to stay advice. Just pick out your landmark and go do it and stay there. Don't run around and try to do someone else's job. Zarepov chips that down in the Canadian zone where Brent Burns is back to pick it up. For Keith. That goes off the stick of Zenobia. And now gets left. Trying to find the handle. Plays it there for Danny Heatley. For Nash. And Nash shuttles it down to Keith. Burns looks ahead to Heatley. Working on Danny Markov, who lost his helmet. He'll have to leave the ice. Gets left down low for Nash. And Markov has made his way off. Heatley holds his ground. Morozov squeezes that by Burns. Might have caught a stick there. There's no penalty. Shipped ahead by Nash down to the Russian zone. The Russians don't like that lack of a call. Marcus Vinterborg and Christian Larkin of Sweden are today's referees. 
Both from sweep. Alexander Ovechkin fires that just wide. And it comes the other way for San Luis. And San Luis chips that by Tootin down to the Russian zone. Under 12 to go in the third period. San Luis gets a stick on that Burns. Or Hamus rather knocks it away. And away comes San Luis with Stahl. San Luis feeds that in front. Stahl taken down by Proshkin. Ovechkin. Up ahead for seven. Alexander Seven, rink wide, great pass for Fedorov. Fedorov in front for Ovechkin, broken up by Bowmister. Now Fedorov drops for two. That pass off the end boards, deliberate. And Bowmister plays it away. San Luis takes a swipe at it. Two stepping into him. Seven pulls it out. Alexander Seven shoots, he whistled that wide. And it comes out the other side. White knuckle time in Quebec City. Canada nursing a 4-2 lead. In comes Seven. He tees it up. Blocked by Bowmister. Loose in front. Score! Alexei Tereschenko pulls the Russians win one. And it's a good shot block by Jay Bowmister. But the shot block goes right over to the Russian player, Tereschenko. And he makes it 4-3. Canada leads by one. No panic from Vyacheslav Vikov. You'll see four. Oh, Mr. Block the shot. It goes right to Tereshtenko. It goes right through Cam Ward. That's just some bad luck for Canada, but Tereshtenko deserves some credit. He wins a foot race with Derek Roy. He's able to jump on that block shot and make it 4-3. Tereshtenko, a Russian Super League champion with Salavat Ufa. For his second goal of the World Championship. And now it's on. I don't think Stephen Harper's that nervous during elections. <laughs> his passion for hockey is undeniable. Now Nash has his stick up a little bit. He's talking to Maxim Afinogenov. They continue to joust, and now Marcus Vinterborg is over there to tell him to cool it. 11 to go in the third period. Canada leads 4 to 3. Afinogenov sends that in deep. Steve Steos has a look. Tereshenko stays out there for the Russians. Here's Steos with it. Ahead for Nash. He's being watched closely. Tereshenko steals. Sends that in front. Afinogenov missed it. Nash having a tough time adjusting to a strong side defenseman pinching. We've been seeing it since the second period. Now Getzloff gets poke check. Takes down Tereshenko. Nash collides with the Finnegan. Oh, coming to Canada. In the neutral zone. And it might be Nash who's going off as Ward goes back to touch it. And Russia down a goal is going to the power play with 10 27 to go. And it's hooking the call. Ryan Getzlaff's going to get it. Alexi Tereshtenko with the puck on a stick. Ryan Getzlaff trying to get away with one again. In the old days, you get away with that. In the new era, you're not getting away with that. Anytime the stick is parallel, they're going to call it. And now the iron comes out for the Russians. It's Fedorov, Semen, Ovechkin, Kovalchuk, and Konstantin Korneyev. He's a property of the Montreal Canadiens. And Korneyev has had a tremendous tournament here Can for the he Russians. Can shoot the puck? Can he ever? Slight delay, so gets left to get a fresh piece of lumber. So Patrick Sharp will face off against Sergei Fedorov. Scramble draw, puck up number seven, shoots! Cam Ward makes the stop. Brent Burns hacks at that, and it's knocked up by Sharp. Dole reaching for it, he falls. Kovalchuk, rink wide for Fedorov, and the Russians will set it up. Kovalchuk backhands that right on the stick of Brent Burns. And he pounds that down to the Russian zone. All these right-handed shots for the Russians, how quickly they get it on goal. Kovalchuk, Semin, Ovechkin, all the right-handed shots, he just snap it coming down the left side. Midway point of this third period. Hamus gets it. He hammers it down. William Kovalchuk swinging back. For Zinovia. Zinovia working in on Steos. Drops it back at the line. Kovalchuk can't hold it. Stalls all over him. A bouncing puck. Korneyev's got it. And Stalls on him, too. Korneyev plays it there for Kovalchuk. And Stahl gives him a bash. It's a little hurt. Loose in front. Kunitz walking in. Chris Kunitz leaves it there for Stahl. It bounced away. Now Stahl back with it. Plays it across. Kunitz in. Waits. Sends it in front. Namok on the save. Stahl taken down. And the Russian net is off. 
a hurricane versus a thrasher and a duck to be included with Chris Kunitz. Eric Stahl does a real good job on Ilya Kovalchuk creating opportunity after opportunity for Ken and then Chris Kunitz at the tail end of it just says, you know what, Eric, I'm going to put it out front for you. Good goaltending, good aggressive play by Canada, and so far an excellent penalty kill for Team Canada. 53 seconds to go on the Russian power play, Gordon. Sharp will step into the faceoff against Sergei Zinovia, the former Boston Bruin, briefly. Very briefly. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about a cup of coffee. Oh, man. Zinovia, rink wide for Prushkin. Vitaly Prushkin, laying it down. Ward trying to leave it there. Now Morozov gets it. Zarepov back for Morozov. Zinovia loose in front. Prushkin tees it up. He just missed wide. And the puck all the way out the other side and down. Ilya Nikulik up for Prushkin. He was poke checked by Burns. Sam Lee gloves it down. He got spun around. And back at the Russian line, Zarepov for Morozov. Big wide pass for Zarepov, gets in behind Bird. Ward just squeezed that by Zarepov. Now Zarepov sends it in front. Back it goes to Nikulin. Across for Proshkin, gets left, steps out of the box. Nikulin tees it up. That was knocked down by Ham, in front. He's taken down. No penalty on the play, gets left with it. And the Canadian bench is up in Hallery. Here come the Russians, three wide. Zarepov tees it up. And that's blocked by Steve Steos. And Steos shaking it off. At the line, Kalina can't hold it. San Luis drops for Getzlaff with Nash. In comes Getzlaff. Sends it in front. San Luis can't reach it as it's broken up neatly by Morozov. Radulov working it on Stales. Sends that in front. Bouncy puck knocked down by Jovanovsky. End to end action now. Danny Heatley brings it ahead. He gets crunched by two Russians. A fin again of and Kalina. Radulov. Lays it down in the Canadian zone. Back goes Bullmister. Bullmister turns that puck over, bouncing in front, and Cam Ward will hang on. 4 3 the score. Back for the rest of the third after this. There's Sergei Zinoviev, star for AK Bars Kazan in the Russian Super League. And this Russian team, so many of them played together in past World Juniors, the core of young Russians coming up. Four of them can't play here. Suspended Stanislav Kizhtov, Alexander Svitov, Alexei Kaigorodov, and Maxim Kondratyev all bolted on American Hockey League teams. And that right off the draw is fired on by Semin. And as a result, suspended by the IHF and can't play in this tournament. Semin shoots, knocked down in front by Hamus. Loose puck, Bolmister plays it out. And that'll be icing against Canada. And again, the Canadians are happy with this. It's not the NHL icing rule, so you can change after sending it down. Here's an example of how warm it is in here. <laughs> yeah, I just saw Bikov respiring profusely. You see Ken Hitchcock as well. So if you think the coaches who are back there sweating it out are warm, think about the players. And that's why we're seeing a lot of bouncing pucks right now. Fedorov off the face off, but Dan Hamus plays it down. And now the puck goes out of play, and we're going to call it the Canadian line. The director of awards have been announced. That getting the Bokov is the top goaltender. Brent Burns, the top defenseman. Danny Heatley is the top forward and the MVP. The all-star team, the Bokov in goal. Green and Thomas Caberle on defense. Heatley, Ovechkin, and Nash, the forwards, on the 2008 tournament all-star team. Puck high in the air for Taze, rolling down. And Fedorov brings it ahead. Shots are even at 26. Alexander Seven in front of Ovechkin shoots. What a save by Ward. Bad save by Cam Ward. At the line is Federal. Feeds that in front. And Dan Hamu's got to skate on that. Ilya Nikula through the middle for Ovechkin. And Eric Stahl saved a breakaway as he knocked that away. Stahl. To go to Markov and now Ovechkin rolling puck for Ovechkin. In he comes, shoots, and Ward steers that away off the end board. Steos battling with Ovechkin. Wins that one in Kunitz. For San Luis, rolls that down to the Russian line. 
Konstantin Korneyov goes back. Grebyshkov, long lead pass for Morozov with Zarepov. Morozov peels it back, and Kunis deflected that down the ice. Guy paying attention. Just go to your landmark and transition defense. Don't overplay. Alexander Rangelov played that ahead. Zarepov shoots, and Cam Ward will glove that with 5.52 to go in the third period. A lot of players would have overplayed, but what Kunitz does, he just goes to his landmark. He's aware. Semin doing a good job, but there you see Ovechkin with the quality chance. Semin getting it to him out front. Talked about the importance of that Capitals line for the uh, for the Russians, and it's been very strong. Now it's Kovalchuk along with Tarasenko and Radulov up front. Two on the back end with Proshkin. And they'll show Jason Spence out of the faceoff circle, so Patrick Sharp will take the draw. Good one. You have two centermen on the ice that are both proficient at taking faceoffs. And both right-handed shots. Mm -hmm. Tereschenko won the faceoff. Fedor two off the inboards. Patrick Sharp saw that coming and swept it away. Tootin did that on purpose, Gord. Spezza takes a swipe at it. And Shimera moves it down the Russian zone. And Proshkin left that puck. And it'll be icing against Canada. Shimera thought that should have been waved off. Vyacheslav Bikov. Second year as the coach of the Russian national team. They're trying to win the world championship for the first time since 1993. Bikov's very popular here with the media in Quebec City. He's perfectly bilingual in terms of understanding Russian and French. He speaks impeccable French. Has played and coached in Switzerland for the better part of 20 years. Fedor two shoots. That's tipped wide by Kovalchuk. And Chimera with it. Lifts it high in the air. Bounces down to two. And Patrick Sharp is in on him. Sharp hammers to Tootin going rink wide for Radulov. But there's Jinko. That pass misfired. Now Prushkin will try it. He falls. In comes Kovalchuk. Shoot scores! Ilya Kovalchuk ties it up. Just a lethal right-handed shooting ability of Kovalchuk, Ovechkin, and Semin. Snapping them on goal. And this goes through a screen again on Cam Ward. That's Kovalchuk's first goal of the tournament, and that's why he does a Lambo leap into the Russian faithful here in the Colisee. Through the neutral zone, it's Jay Boatmister just backing off, but through the screen, through Boatmister, through Ward to the back of the net. But these guys just squeeze it off so well, Gordon. We've seen it three times from Kovalchuk, and on the third time, it works, and that's the Lambo leap to the Russians. Ken Hitchcock's just calming his guys down right now on the Canadian bench. They haven't had a big offensive push against Evgeny Nabokov here in the third period. It's been the Russians dictating the flow of the game. 11 to 3 on the shots on goal in favor of the Russians, and Canada calls tie. Canada just needs to get back on their offensive horse. One of the things that's happened that's helped the Russians a lot, they're stretching the Canadians out. Because there's no red line and the two line passes in play, that's created a huge gap between the back checking Canadian forwards and the Canadian defensemen. And that's why we've seen so much flow through the neutral zone. But Kovalchuk, the beneficiary of that loose puck, comes in from a bad angle, snapping it through Bo Mister to tie it up at four. Taves, Doan, and Roy for Canada. And you see the intensity of Ilya Kovalchuk. Danny Markov plays it to the Canadian line. Hamuse knocks it out. Canadians on their heels here in the third period. Now a tie game at 4-4. Burns. Crispy ahead for Taves. Up for Doan. That pass goes off the leg of Sergei Fedorov. And Kalina banks it ahead. In behind the Canadian defense was seven. And Brent Burns played that with a high stick. And you see, that's one of the deals. You see how they're just stretching them out. There's another example of the Russians stretching the Canadians out. And Brent Burns is forced to have huge eye hand coordination in that situation. Or Ovechkin's off to the races alone on Cam Ward. Big line out there for Canada. Gets laugh. Keatley and Nash. Green and Jovanovsky on the points. And Zarepov, Zinoliev. And Morozov out there for the Russians. Lots of firepower for both sides. Getzlaff won that draw. Green for Jovanovsky. Through the middle for Getzlaff. Ryan Getzlaff works his way across the line. Shoots! Save made by Nabokov. Whistle around the boards by Morozov. Can't clear it out. Nash had that roll off his stick. 
Nash taps it down for Heatley. Heatley for Nash. Loose behind the goal. Nash spins, shoots loose in front, and Heatley couldn't reach it. Nash trying to keep it alive. Zarapov with it. And he'll lift that down to the Canadian zone as Jovanovski has a look. Dangerous bouncing puck. And he plays it up to center ice. In comes Zinovia. Poke check. Heatley up for Getzlaff. Bit of a long ship for these guys. Gremishkov plays that down on the Canadian line. Steos hacks it back to the Russian zone. Under four to go here in the third period. Gremishkov through the middle for Kovalchuk. Kovalchuk sends it across. Tereshenko in front for Finnegan. Off that goes off a stick and out of play. This is something Canada's going to have to be aware of when you go to 2010 in the Olympics. The Russian utilization of the stretch pass. It's really broken Canada down and created a lot of problems for their defensemen. The Russians have really exploited that starting in the second period, and it's worked well for them. Duncan Keith, one of the more mobile defensemen for Canada. He's one of the guys that has to really be effective in these kinds of situations, Gord. Spetzel will take the face off against Alexei Tereschenko. Tereschenko wins it cleanly back for Grebishkov. Whips it across, and that shot by Korneyev goes wide. Loose in front, and it bounces to Chimera. He's away with Patrick Sharp. In comes Chimera, leaping around Grebishkov at the line, Spetzel. That's it with it. In the corner, crisscrossing with Chimera. Tried to feed that in front. It bounces off the back of the goal. There is Chenko. Rink wide for Kovalchuk. Kovalchuk, rink wide again. The pass just missed the Finnegan off. Keith falls hard into the end board. Nice job by Patrick Sharp to support him on the back check. That's what you have to do. Have the forwards coming back. Steos hammers it down the Russian zone. Now Chimera on the loose puck. It bounced away from Fedorov. Alexander Semen gets away. He's with Ovechkin. Seven for Ovechkin. Busting through the Canadian defense, and Burns got to stick on him. Now Ovechkin collides with Hamus. Seven fires it off the side of the goal. And Burns will bank that out. Slowly rolls down, and that will be icing against the Canadians. 2.41 to go in the third period. Fans don't like that at all. They think there should have been no icing there, and they're probably right. Should overtime be necessary? It'll be a full intermission and a 20-minute overtime period, four on four, sudden death. If it's still tied, it's a shootout. Here comes that AK Bars Kazan line. Zarapov, Zinoviev, and Morozov. And it'll be Getzlaff to face off against them. Getzlaff wins another draw. Amhuse plays it up for Getzlaff. He was tied up by Zinoviev. Out it goes to Burns. Away comes Brent Burns leading the rush for Canada. Rolls down to the Bakov, who sweeps out of the corner. Zarapov bouncing puck in front, played away by Cleaner. Heatley takes a swipe at it, that was blocked. Nash got hit right in the face with that puck. He's going to the bench. And Ham Hughes plays it down. Kunitz comes on for Nash. Heatley will peel off as well. Nash is going right to Team Canada's dressing room right now. That should be icing. And it is. 2.06 to go, and Nash may need some stitching. And he's one tough hombre. He gets right down there, and you see that puck come up and get him right in the mouth. And he might need more than stitching. He might need some dental work. There's Face the opportunity up. going right out front. Face off in the Russian zone. Stahl, Kunitz, and San Luis. Green and Jovanovski on the back end. Tereschenko will face off against Stahl. Stahl wins it cleanly. Back to Green. Tees it up. Goes off the back of Martin San Luis. Kunitz takes a swipe at it. Stahl battling for it. Under two to go in the third period. Tied at four. Lead pass for Kovalchuk. In comes Ilya Kovalchuk. He tied the game moments ago for Nikula. Plays it down for Radulov. In front. That pass just missed Andre Markov. Now played out by Green, looking for Stahl. There is Chenko. Thanks that down right on to Cam Ward. Up comes San Luis, chipping it there for Stahl. Stahl working on Grebishkov. Korneyev gets it by Roy, by Keith. That's icing. And they're going to call that icing as Keith did not touch the puck. And her face off in the Russian zone with 1.20 to go. Ken Hitchcock's going to wait to see 
what the Russians put on the ice because he does not want Ovechkin fed her off and send the run foot loose and fancy free. He's going with Keatley, gets left and sharp as Nash has just come back from the Canadian dressing room. So Rick Nash is on the Canadian bench. Fedorov against Getzlaff. Fedorov wins the draw back cleanly. And this is Andre Markov. Fans on the first clearing attempt. Ovechkin chips it down. And that's icing again against the Russians. And now, if he wants, Hitchcock can put Nash out. Well, he does. He, he gets he Here wants. comes Nash. He wants desperately. 1-12 to go in the third period. You called it before the game, my friend. You said this was going to be one for the ages. This has been a spectacular afternoon of hockey. This has been so an good. exhibition of skill, will, you name it. And off the faceoff, in comes Nash. Sends it in front, gets left, got a stick on that, turned away by Nabokov. And Ovechkin working now on Burns. In comes Alexander Ovechkin. Shoves down Ham Hughes. Ovechkin trying to feed that in front. Burns gets in the way. At the line, Nikulin takes a swipe at it. That hit gets left. Plays it there for Nash. That was broken up by Nikulin, or Nash was away. And Ovechkin across the line is offside. Quality chance at both ends, but in particular Canada, with their big line on the ice, getting a huge chance against Slobakov. Heatley just couldn't get to the loose puck, but here's Ovechkin. And you talk about identifying the guys he has to play against. He knows he's going against Dan Hamus all afternoon, and he's not just the ball carrier, he's the tackler and the punisher as well. Russia has been to overtime twice, beat the Czechs 5-4 on a goal by Morozov. Beat Belarus in a shootout. Morozov had the winner in that as well. Those were 10 minute overtime periods. Now racing back is Steos. As Zinoviev got spilled. 30 seconds to go in the third. Steve Steos setting it up for Keith. Now Roy trying to kick that ahead. Morozov playing it there for Zinoviev. Up for Zarapov. Zarapov shoots and rolls down. And Cam Ward will gobble that up. 18 seconds to go in the third period. And the Russians won another game late. Alexander Ovechkin scored with six seconds left in the third period to beat Sweden 3-2. Four forwards are coming on the ice for the Russians right now. Semen, Kovalchuk, Ovechkin, and Fedorov. And Kornea will be the other player off for the Russians. He's a defenseman, but as Gord said, a left-hand shot who plays the right point, and he's got a heavy, heavy shot. Stahl will face off against Fedorov. Scramble draw, pulled out by Burns. Thanks to the head. Kovalchuk kept it alive for the moment. Now Ovechkin fires it back into the Canadian zone. Back goes Dan Hamhuis. And Hamhuis will watch time tick down as he plays it there for Nash. Rick Nash, poke check from behind by Semin. And the first gold medal game ever played at the World Championship in Canada is going to overtime. It's been an electrifying afternoon so far. Somebody's got one shot on the win. The World Championship, the Bakoff and Ward have both been spectacular for their respective countries. Ward, the biggest thing for Canada, limit turnovers, take away space. For the Russians, keep attacking. It's been working for them. Russia scores two to equalize, and to overtime we go at the 2008 World Championship. You have a thought possible. <laughs> All right, here is the third period scoring summary. Two goals to show you, both of them from Russia. Tarashenko, Simon with an assist. He's got three points in the game. Then Kovalchuk ties it late. They've outshot Canada 25-14 in the last two periods. Here's Gordon Pierre. Thank you, Dave. Five years ago this week, Anson Carter scored the overtime winner for Canada to win the gold medal against Sweden. And 14 years ago, Luke Robitaille won the shootout against the Finns to bring Canada gold. Canada has won four straight overtime games, by the way. At the World Championship, in comes Sergei Fedorov. That goes off the foot of Mike Green and stung him. We are four and four in overtime for 20 minutes. And then, if necessary, a shootout. San Luis throws it across, intercepted. And Andre Markov sends that through the middle. Now San Luis to stall. That bounced away from him. In comes Markov. Off the leg of San Luis and drops down on his equipment. 
Ooh. Gave the puck away. Fedorov didn't realize it was there. Who will it be? Someone's going to have a memory of a lifetime within the next 40 minutes. Green. Up for stall. That misfired. Now Jovanovski with it. In comes San Luis. Martin San Luis has Canada changes. Can't get a shot away. Cornet has all over him. Now Getzlaff comes over for Canada. Cornet trying to knock the puck away. Getzlaff shoved down Grebishkov. Grebishkov brings out the puck. He's got Morozov and Zinoviev with him. And Sergei Zinoviev brings it ahead. Zinoviev through the middle of the defense. Plays it across. Morozov shoots. That goes wide. Getzlaff brings it ahead with Nash. Four checking as Morozov picks it up. Russians changing again. It is the long change in this overtime, so lots of chances. Rick Nash tries to peel that around. Tereschenko. Keith plays it in deep. Now that pass intercepted by Nash. He's got Getzlaff with him. Nash sends that in front, intercepted by Prushkin. And Vitaly Prushkin, long drive, goes off the end boards. Ward doesn't knock that away. And Duncan Keith had to play that away from Prushkin. Now Nash with it. Oh, look out. That's a That's penalty. A penalty. Rick Nash lifted that out. That's a penalty. Canada's arguing. And the officials are conferring. That's a penalty. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> That's clearly a penalty. There's no deflection. That goes up and over. That's aerial. Right up and over the glass. Did it touch the glass behind the Russian bench? Is the discussion, I believe. Not the kind of start Canada wanted. Nonetheless, Gord, doesn't matter. Sitting back, you saw them sitting back in the third period. They were outshot 13 to 6. They were outshot 12 to 8 in the second. 25 14 the last 40 minutes of the game so sitting back doesn't help Canada they're better when they're aggressive this is the call that could decide it and it is a penalty that's a penalty it's the right call Nash will go off and Russia will go to the power play in overtime Rick Nash knew right away I mean he knew but Ken Hitchcock is coach with Canada and also in Columbus knew. Russia has one power play goal in six minutes of power play time. And it's four on three. Fedorov with Ovechkin and seven. Kovalchuk on the back end. It's four forwards for the Russians. And here we go. Patrick Sharp to face off against Sergei Fedorov. And Sharp wins that draw cleanly. Ham Hughes wraps that around the glass and out. Ilya Komolchak, who scored a tie in late in the third period for Fedorov. He drops it off for Komolchak, working on Stales. Back he goes to seven. Alexander Seven. He's got a pair in the game. Being flushed up by Stales. Ovechkin for Komolchak. Fedorov standing in front. Komolchak walks in, winds and fires. Ward the same rebound, put high by Fedorov. Should be outside. Faceoff should be outside. Fedorov put it up and over the net on his own. Fedorov's argument it was tipped on the way out. Wasn't tipped by anybody. Cam Ward comes up with a big save. And then Fedorov up and over on his own. That faceoff should be outside. And it is. And Ovechkin, this guy celebrates his own goals and his teammates' goals as well. And is as passionately as any human being I've ever seen in this sport. Fedorov, Ovechkin, Semen, and Kovalchuk. Just a touch of firepower on this Russian power play. Kovalchuk brings it ahead. Drops it off for Fedorov. Steps around Dome. Now Fedorov watching Ovechkin. Plays it across to Kovalchuk. Kovalchuk in. Shoots. Scores! Ilya Kovalchuk wins the gold medal for Russia. It's Russia's first world championship since 1993. Tough way for Canada to lose, but give that team in red a ton of credit. The guys in the studio were saying it. They were down 4-2 with 20 minutes to go. They reeled it back in to make it 4-4.
Kovalchuk, one of the guys that brings all kinds of magic to it, and then he ends the game with a lightning quick release. You saw him have three different opportunities in the third period to tie it up, and on the third one he did, and here he gets one chance in overtime, and it's magic. High to the top of the net, and Vyacheslav Vikov celebrates along with the entire Russian staff. I think these guys don't care, they care, just as much as the Canadians players do. It's been a long time coming for the Russians, and for Canada, it'll be silver on home ice at the 2008 World. That thing's just launched. And super slow motion doesn't do it any justice, and Rick Nash knows as he's watching Kovalchuk come in. The man that he tied for in the Rocket Richard Trophy race along with Jerome McGinley with 41 goals. Kovalchuk doesn't need a lot of time and space to get it off. He has far more time and space, gets to four versus three, and he ends this thing for Russia, and they go home with gold. And Ilya Kovalchuk gets kisses on the cheek from Alexander Ovechkin, and you saw the celebration from Sergei Fedorov playing for his country at the World Championship for the first time since 1990. He defected not long after that and couldn't go home for four and a half years. And so for the Russians, it's gold. Canada will settle for silver. What a hockey game. That had everything. And it won't make those guys any happier, but it's been a great tournament for Canada. Brian Getzlaff, Danny Heatley, Rick Nash. Phenomenal, this tournament. The young guys that stepped up with the passing of the torch in defense. Duncan Keith, Brent Burns, Danny Hamus, Mike Green. Phenomenal tournaments for all the young Canadian defenders. Ilya Komolchuk, the first player from Russia ever picked first overall in the NHL draft, scores the overtime winner after tying it up late in the third period with less than six minutes to go. And Russia, the overtime kings of this tournament, won two games in OT and one in a shootout. Well, someday Canadian fans will remember that they saw a classic here, just not right now. Correct. And Cam Ward takes his first loss as a Canadian goaltender at the World Championship. So we're going to have the player of the game presentation. The officials will get their commemorative medals. And then we'll have the presentation of the tournament MVP, the all-star teams, and of course, the gold medal. Great future for Mike Green, standing right there. Eric Stahl, Jamel Mares, Danny Hamus, who played flawlessly in this tournament. Jason Spetzer, who improved so much. Clearly a bitter pill for Ken Hitchcock and his staff. Craig McTavish of the Edmonton Oilers. Mike Johnson of the LA Kings. There wasn't a lack of will on either side, Gord. And I know, like you said, it's a bitter pill for people in Canada right now to digest. This was one of those special moments in hockey you won't forget. Vladislav Trechak will be part of the player of the game presentation. Ovechkin's not tired from playing. He's tired from celebrating. He's been running around all over, high-fiving everybody. For years, they had trouble getting their best players to play. They had trouble getting them to play together. Had trouble finding quality goaltending. Well, they got all of that and more in this World Championship. And now it's time for the presentation of the best players for each team.
The prizes will be presented by Mr. Francois Thibault, President of TISO, and by Mr. Vladislav Tretiak, Russian hockey legend and President of the Russian Ice Hockey Federation. The joueur du match pour l'équipe Canada Team Canada, player of the game, is the numéro 8, number 8, Brent Burns. Burns scored twice for Canada, and he is named the player of the game. Le joueur de match pour l'équipe Russie, the best player of Team Russia, numéro 42, number 42, Sergei Zinoviev. Zinoviev has the player of the game for Russia. That might have been voted on before the Ilya Komolchuk tying and winning goal in overtime. You see, they watched him play very much today. <laughs> Les officiels sur la glace recevront maintenant leur médaille commémorative marquant leur participation au match de la médaille d'or présentée par M. René Fassin, le président de Time for the officials to receive their commemorative medals. The Canadian fans aren't pleased with them. The officials will now receive their commemorative medals for the officiating the gold medal game. The on-ice officials' medals will be presented by Mr. René Fassin, IIHF president. And then we'll have the presentation of the trophy. And the gold medal. Le du to Alexei Morozov first, Russia followed by his Russian Russia teammates. Russia and there he is, Morozov, a 31 year old native of Moscow. What's the first round pick of Pittsburgh? Seven years in the NHL. He was the top forward last year. Now he's the captain of a world championship team and the owner of a gold medal. There's going to be a party on the Grand Delay tonight like you've never seen. Yeah. They'll be getting after it over there at uh, Red Square as well. They're probably going off right about now. Double Chuck goes over and they're going to handshake now with the Canadians. Stay tuned, 2010 is next. <laughs> wow. Next year's World Championship will take place in Geneva, Switzerland. I think this is Fedorov's last World Championship, Gordon. You wonder if this is his last game. He's an unrestricted free agent this summer. He's talked about maybe playing another year. He's lived in North America for 18 years. And then he's going to settle. So the odds of him going back to play in Russia don't seem very good. Wow, well, Evgeny Nabokov, Darren Drager, and Darren Pang talked about it. Was he ever good in the first period? You know, you think about how well he played where Canada outshot Russia 15 to 5 and the score was only 3-1. Could have been a lot greater than that had not been for Nabokov. And now time for the Tournament MVP Award. That'll go to Danny Heatley of Canada. The joueur par excellence du championnat mondial 2008 de l'IHF. The most valuable player of the 2008 IIHF World Hockey Championship. Le numéro 15, number 15, d'équipe Canada, Danny Hitley. Hitley is the MVP. He sets a Canadian record with 12 goals and one World Championship. It's the second time he's been named the tournament MVP. Also won it back in 2004. And now time for the Canadians to get their silver medals. Les médailles et plaques d'argent seront remises par Monsieur Alan Morris, président du Conseil de Hockey Canada, accompagné de Monsieur Jacques Tanguay et Claude Rousseau, co-président du Comité organisateur de Québec, et Monsieur Fred. 
Alan Morrison from Hockey Canada in the middle with members of the organizing committees for both Halifax and Quebec. We'll present the plate and the silver medals to Team Canada. Doan was a world championship captain last year. Now he'll accept silver. Second silver for Canada in the last four years. And while we have a moment, we'd like to express our thanks to the people of Halifax and Quebec City who have been our hosts for the last two and a half weeks. Bringing the IHF World Championship to Canada for the first time, they did themselves proud. Extra players, Matthew Ganahl, Sam Gagne, who played his first World Championship game. Got in against Norway in the quarterfinals. Equipment and medical staffs. And for Coach Ken Hitchcock, the first time behind the bench as a head coach, an eight no run ends. An overtime loss to Russia in the gold medal game. And now Jacques Roga, the president of the International Olympic Committee, will join the group and present the gold medals to Team Russia. So many of these players have history against each other. Russians against Canadians at the World Junior, the Olympics. And they lived up to their predecessors in this historic rivalry. Danny Markov played 18 playoff games for the Red Wings last year. Couldn't find an NHL job. He priced himself out of the market, went back to Russia, and he's had a real good year and a great end of the year. Maxim Shushinsky yeah. plays for St. Petersburg. Slava Bikov, one of the greatest 
Soviet players of all time. Man who moved to Switzerland to finish his playing career. Coaches there. He's come back home. Let his country back to the top of the hockey world. Canada, by the way, regardless of the outcome, is now, if these things matter, the number one country in the IHF rankings once again. We'll be hearing that name Beekoff again soon. He's got a son that's a tremendous player in Switzerland right now. For Switzerland, he's a Swiss yeah. junior. Canada's reign as gold medalist is over. The Canadians held the World Championship, the World Junior Championship, and the under-18 simultaneously. Now the Russians have ended that run. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. And now the Russian national anthem. The World Championship was played in Canada for the first time in the 100 years of the International Ice Hockey Federation. Come back soon. And now the Russians will pose as IHF President Reddy Fazel will close the tournament. Chers amis québécois, merci. Merci pour deux semaines inoubliables. Merci Québec. Merci chers partisans. Merci Jacques, merci Fred, merci Claude, merci encore une fois. On se verra en Suisse l'année prochaine. Je déclare au nom de la Ligue internationale de hockey sur glace les championnats du monde de 2008 de l'IHF Claude. The IHF World Championship 2008. Picture of a championship. See you in Switzerland. Thank you. And the tournament is closed. Russia wins gold on Canadian ice. And the rivalry has never been better. The 2008 World Championship on TSN is brought to you by ESSO.